This scenario is a work of fiction. All incidents and dialogue and all characters, with the exception of some well-known historical figures, are products of the scenario's creator and are not to be construed as real. Where real-life historical figures appear, the situations, incidents and dialogues concerning those persons are almost entirely fictional and are not intended to depict actual events or to change the entirely fictional nature of this story. This is fake news, but we hope you will enjoy it. Welcome to this special episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we will be playing the cult adventure and the rocket's red glare that's written by Jacqueline Brick and will be released today by Helmgast. And uh, joining me today, I have Craig. Good evening. And also Jenny. Hi, everyone. And I'm also joined by a very special guest. Uh, I have here with me today Isak Jansson from Sweden's largest actual play podcast, uh, Rollspelsklubben. Welcome, Isaac. Hello, 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 hello. Hi. It's great to have you here. I'm a big fan of, uh, of your show. It's legitimately funny. And it's, uh, I think, doing a, a great job at bringing role-playing to more uh, people in Sweden. Um, can you say a few words about what you guys do before we get started? Oh, it's just, uh, we, we play the Swedish version of Dungeons and Dragons, so it's called Drakor de Måner, which was, I think, I can't remember, it's, it's released in the 80s or something, and it's, it's very old and uh, <laughs> corny in its way. And uh, we just, I just take in comics that uh, I know and I like, and we just play games of uh, Drakor de Måner. And uh, we just, it's just, it's very unpretentious and very stupid. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. And uh, I thought it would be very interesting to bring our two shows together because in many ways we are polar opposites. And sometimes when opposites meet like that, uh, magic can happen. So let us see if we can create some magic today. As we begin, and the rocket's red glare. We begin in New York City. It's the morning of Sunday, November the 6th of 2016. We see before us Trump Tower, a 55-floor monolith in glass and steel on Fifth Avenue, overlooking Central Park. The rising morning sun makes the tower gleam like a pillar of light. Outside, the police officers with automatic weapons and full military gear are on guard, and a cordon has been set up around the building, frisking and checking the ID of everyone that wishes to enter. Protesters have been crowding outside the building for the last few months, and it's getting worse and worse every day that we get closer to the election. Tourists are still let into the tower's gilded lobby, though, the golden elevator, escalator, and luxury shops. Trump Tower never stops doing business. It's six o'clock in the morning, and at least eight iPhones start their alarms simultaneously with different signals, creating a cacophony that would wake even the dead from their slumber. Several of you interns have been piled together in a makeshift office and dormitory in one of the unoccupied apartments in Trump Tower. It's a luxurious apartment, but without any furniture, and you've all been forced to sleep on hastily acquired cots or camp beds. The break room catering staff make sure that there's coffee and food, but it's basically cafeteria food and, well, not great. The contrast is extreme. This apartment would cost two million dollars to buy, the kind of place you would likely never be able to afford. But here you are, sleeping on uncomfortable beds from Target. What awaits you today is another grueling day of press releases, answering phone calls and emails, and hastily deleting any tweets Trump might attempt to make. You have control over it today, Ian, but when the man has something to say, he usually finds a way, no matter what time of day it is, or how clear the Republican National Committee has made it that he not generate any new controversies before the vote on Tuesday. You're paid next to nothing for this. Or, well, you. You get paid in exposure, yes, exposure of being in this high-profile campaign and getting the ability to meet a whole lot of powerful people. But yeah, try paying for groceries with that. Seeing the opulence of Trump Tower, the expensive designer suits, 
dresses and luxury watches on the people you interact with and comparing that with what you have, well, it either motivates you to do more or completely drains all the energy from you. You work pretty much all day long, roused at six o'clock and you keep going until midnight, bossed around by campaign staffers and the campaign manager Kellyanne, doing anything and everything that you're asked to do. All this while your fellow interns are jockeying for influence and trying their best to stand out in order to get that glowing recommendation letter. Many not hesitating to make you look bad in order to get this. Avoiding getting backstabbed and political maneuvering drains what little energy you have left. But hey, you can't grow if you're in your comfort zone, right? So in this condo, we find June Newhouse. Tell us a bit about yourself, June. Well, of course, a uh, top student working hard to keep everyone happy and satisfied. Making sure that everyone finds their mark and that they are where they're supposed to be at the specific time, of course. Um, always with a smile, even though lately it seems those smiles are more for show than genuine. When did you get up this morning? Did you did you even go to bed last night? Well, if uh, the pretty hard chair in the cafeteria or, well, dining area is considered a bed, I did go to bed for, uh, I think, one hour and 45 minutes. Yeah? Well, that's more than you get most nights, so I suppose that's something. And there is a lot to do, after all. We also find Danielle... A junior from Dartmouth, extremely blonde and always impeccably dressed. You're not sure when she managed to do it, but she's already wearing her makeup. She does the copy editing for the press releases and has already begun typing furiously. June, did you see Danielle sleepwalking last night? She she does that sometimes, which is a a bit unnerving. But what about last night? I have seen her before, uh, but the thing that kind of bothered me this time was she wasn't actually walking, she was just standing there, which was kind of creepy, because I thought she was awake first, but, I mean, why would she just stand there like that? Well, she eventually went to back to bed, I suppose, but it was it was creepy. We also find Rowena here. Can you describe yourself and what you're doing now? I'm a young... Blonde, blue-eyed, 20-something. One of the few non-American interns here. I'm actually an exchange student from Cambridge in London. Here as part of the diversity concept uh, they're trying to go with. I didn't really think I'd be here, but somehow I am. It's been very stressful. It's been very hard. But I've worked hard. I think everyone respects me for that. I try and be friendly with everyone, even if sometimes I don't quite agree with everyone. This whole campaign is so insane. There's so much of it that doesn't really make any sense. But I have to think that I'm not really here for that. I'm here to learn, and then take what I learn back home. And then there, hopefully I can, you know, do something with myself. So I try and turn a blind eye to some of the <laughs> the intricacies of this campaign. Everything is so big, so grandiose, so possibly divorced from actual reality. But that's just how American politics are, I think to myself. And I'm learning, and I'm learning well. So I work hard and do my best to please everyone so that my CV can look really good when I go home. A great start to life. Yes. Hopefully, anyway. Yes, indeed. And and turning a blind eye is something that isn't so difficult for you. You are, after all, only seen properly on one eye, right? I don't see it as that unusual. I mean, I was born that way. Still, my eye's been aching a lot as I've had to have my lenses in quite a lot. You're not really supposed to wear them for 24 hours at a time, but I kind of have. But, you know, I kind of feel awkward if I don't wear them, you know, my right eye can be quite off-putting otherwise, so I make sure that I have lenses that mean my blue eyes match at 
at least. Yes. Did you book that flight back home already? I have. After all, once the campaign's over, my internship's done. I don't really want to stay around after. Not that I haven't learned a lot, enjoyed a lot. Some of this luxury is incredible, but I don't know. Some of it's a bit too much. Is this really needed for one family of people? Again, though, I not my place to judge others. No, it's not. It would be difficult to continue doing what you're doing if you did. Ian, what about you? Can you describe yourself and what you're doing right now? Uh, well, my name is Ian Alexander. I uh, raised in uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina, on the border to North Carolina. I, uh, I guess I'm just trying to make my way up in society and hope to make my parents, uh, Mary and Louise, happy. Uh, I guess I, um, I have a weird accent being from South Carolina. It's mostly because I've worked hard to get rid of my accent, actually. The, the kind of, you know, hick kind of sounding accent that I used to have doesn't work that well in the political place where I am right now. That's why I moved to Brussels for a couple of years, tried to make my way uh, into the political world and changed my accent, of course, because of that. The thing I, I haven't told anyone, which is kind of a secret, is um, I don't really have a college degree. It's, 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 all, it's all bought. I, I, I bought the college degree. It's just a plaque my room but um, anyway I'm, I'm married uh, with the, my lovely wife Ashley and uh, we don't have any kids but we're you know, we're working at it indeed you are and then here you find yourself in this very high profile campaign so that degree that you bought seems to have done the trick in the room we also find Kate Warren a, a junior from Wharton who's come into the condo uh, as well, and she seems to have turned on the news. It seems like she's picked MSNBC. Typical. June, you wonder how a registered Democrat would choose to join the campaign, but Kate is one. The main story right now is about how Melania Trump did some modeling back in 96 in the US without a work visa. Wouldn't Fox News be a better choice? I mean, given where you are, right, June? As I see her turning to that other channel, I actually quickly get out of my seat, uh, straighten out my clothes and, and walk up to her. I grab the remote from her and, and turn into Fox as, well, they do have a better way of expressing things from time to time. She uh, smiles a bright and friendly smile at you. Oh, <laughs> sorry, June. <laughs> Um, no, no, I I just wanted to watch uh, Fox. Uh, they have this uh, special coming on, and yeah, you know, everyone is on their toes today, and we really just need to focus on what's important, okay? Of course, you know, whatever you say. Just, just a few more days now. Yay. Yeah. You uh, notice that her eyes are red as if she's been crying a lot, but it's probably just stress, right? You, you're all stressed, just like you said. Can I uh, can I ironically clap when she changes the channel? Of course you can. And as you do that clapping, um, the campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, enters the room. She has bleach blonde hair and is wearing a satin red one-piece. She's amazing at keeping focused and never loses her composure in spite of the extreme stress you're all under. You have seen her with the media, and she never ever lets them get under her skin. Always on message, defending Mr. Trump, no matter what they throw at her. How do you feel about that, uh, Ian? Do you are you impressed with her? What what do you feel about your your manager here, Kellyanne? Um, I'm more actually scared of her in a way because I think she. I mean, I can I can be the tough guy in the in the room with the other interns, but as soon as she comes into a room, that's. Uh, that's when I realized that it's time for me to kind of back down. That's why I immediately stop clapping as soon as she comes in. And I get back to looking at my phone, pretending to be uh, working. She comes in and, um, all right, uh, it's time to get started, guys. June, uh, Rowena, I'm going to need you to help Danielle with the press releases and scanning the media. 
We need to distract from this Melania story. You've seen it, right? Uh, of course, Mrs. Conway. We'll get uh, get to it uh, right this instance. Excellent. And Ian, we, we got a really busy day ahead of us. Um, I need you on Mr. Trump's Twitter ASAP. We've got to reach out to the battleground states. Uh, I'm talking Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Nevada. We've got great pictures from the rallies there. Uh, you keep the keep the message bland and, and, and avoid offending anyone, all right? Remember, thank them for their support. Get them out to vote. You know, hashtag drain the swamp, hashtag MAGA. Uh, oh heck, you know, you can even throw in some retweets about crooked Hillary if you want as well. But I don't need to tell you all this. You're a, you're a pro. You got it. And Juna Rowena, what uh, what do you do? Do you uh, get to it, or um, is there anything you need to do before? No, I'm already awake and ready, and I just look at June, smile, and say, Right, okay, well, let's uh, get to work then, June. Do you need a coffee or something? I can get you a coffee. It, it, that, would be, that would be great if you could get me coffee. I just need a, a quick stop at the ladies' room, okay? And then I'll come join you and, uh, and Danielle. Not a problem, and I smile, and I make the same offer to Danielle for a coffee, because I know it's always good in the morning to offer people coffees. I don't like them myself, but, you know, yeah, kind of have to drink them around here. Definitely, if you were to to open up with some tea, people might uh, look at you a little bit funny. All right, so you get cracking, and, and um, just like every day here, time moves really, really quickly. Uh, Ian, what kind of tweets do you make? I, well, I, I try to stay with uh, whatever uh, Kellyanne suggested there, so I, I'm, I'm not doing anything odd or weird or anything. I'm just uh, trying to to keep it as bland as I can. So I'm, I'm mostly writing about uh, Crooked Hillary and um, and the Democrats being hypocrites and stuff. Yeah, you're doing what, what she's asked for. And I mean, of course, it works like a charm. I mean, the amount of retweets and likes, it's crazy. I mean, you are running the most popular Twitter in the world uh, right now. Uh, and the feeling of power that that gives, how do you how do you feel? It feels really good. I, I think the mainly is a um, it's a question of um, what do you say like uh, it's craftsmanship for me that I really make the tweets sound like Donald Trump. So I I, I really work towards getting the right tone to it so that, that it's got that kind of uh, the the cockiness of of Trump and the the arrogance, but still uh, you know the the kind of um, the weird spelling and even sometimes maybe making uh, sentences that don't really work but just to, I, I do that completely uh, consciously it's like second nature to you now you're so you're so used to speaking like him and and most likely no one can tell the difference between uh, between your styles now I'll, I'll also like talk shit about certain European countries yeah so I, I think I'm attacking mostly like Germany and Angela Merkel that is w- very well appreciated by the base. They really love that. It works great. I'm, by the way, I'm I, I'm still in that room that we were sitting in before. So I, I'm basically sitting in the sofa, just doing everything from there. Exactly. There's a there's just um, one or, or two sofas in there, but other than that, no furniture. So it's this kind of uh, dormitory slash office that you've been sort of put into uh, since you know you're based in, in in Trump Tower, and you basically eat, live, uh, sleep, and, and and do your work uh, from this room. Uh, sometimes you get to go out into the tower, but Kellyanne mostly keeps you in here. I kind of see that I have a specific place in the sofa. And that I'm very kind of territorial about that specific corner of the sofa. And I think I've made it clear to everyone that don't don't sit in my corner. And they, they stopped trying a long time ago. But you see that there's a direct message. That's odd. Mr. Trump only has DMs open for uh, those that he follows. And, and that's only family and a, a few right-wing talk news hosts like uh, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity... Oh, and he's got the Trump hotels and previous campaign managers like Paul Manafort and oh, Kellyanne, of course. Oh, and Vince McMahon. Uh, great to have professional wrestling behind the campaign as well. But something is strange here. Those people don't send DMs. This is a DM from an account without an avatar and with no name. Mm. Yeah, I check it. It says, we know. That is all. I, I guess I just see it as uh, some kind of a uh, cheap trick or maybe someone sent it to the wrong place so I, I i don't i think i delete it you get rid of it and you get back to tweeting about uh, crooked hillary and germany and germany yes and angela merkel the dm comes back an hour later we know 
I think I... It, it, would I have any reason to uh, suspect that it would be some something weird? Um, there is something strange about it. Uh, you have never seen DMs coming in, in this in this way without an avatar, without a user connected to it. Uh, is someone trying to hack this account, or what's going on? Is it sabotage from the the Hillary campaign, perhaps? I think I would reply something ironic, like uh, uh, we know. I, I'll respond. Uh, we do too. And you send that response, and a message comes back from Twitter saying that this account does not exist. Okay, I, I think I, I just, I don't, I don't really care about that that much. Now, you push it away. I, I start writing things that, uh, like, soccer is a game for idiots and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that works. And um, the day continues, moving at a rapid speed, and, and you remain stuck in this dormitory office until the afternoon. By now, your your shoulders are killing you and your eyes are dry from staring at the screens non-stop. Both you, Ian, working with Twitter and June and Rowena working with Danielle on, on copy editing. Kellyanne enters. Hey, everyone. I have a surprise for you. And she's sort of motioning towards the door as if she's going to bring in someone important. It's Governor Pence, she says, and in comes... Donald Trump's vice presidential candidate, Governor Mike Pence of Indiana. He's uh, wearing his normal gray suit and a red tie, the American flag lapel prominently displayed on his jacket. And he has that distant, absent-minded look on his face that he always has, as if his thoughts are far away, probably reciting scripture in his head or something. His hair is completely white, as are his teeth. He holds up two plastic bags with the Dunkin' Donuts logo. And you see this, June. As soon as he enters, I'm I'm on my feet and I actually start applauding. And it's not ironically, it's it's genuinely. Um, I'm trying to, you know, get the room to follow. I I follow. And I follow as well, because, again, I know that everyone likes applauding people when they enter rooms here. And it's, you know, best not to go against that. Mike Pence is the prototype of a conservative Christian, and he's so tightly wound that he even refuses to dine alone with women he isn't married to. He holds up the two bags of Dunkin' Donuts. I thought I would bring my favorite interns some refreshments, he says, and he starts passing around the, the donuts. There are drinks as well, Sprite and Diet Coke. Oh, thank you so much. This will be really helpful today, I say and smile, thinking, to be honest, something more healthier would actually be better, but again... Soft drinks and sugary snacks. I mean, I don't say no to those. I say something sarcastic like, uh, oh, a, a Brit eating donuts. That would be the first. Well, Ian, we do have donuts back home as well. And June? Um, I'll have a Diet Coke and a donut, of course. Uh, and I, I, I suspect that they're, you know, the frosting on top of it is, uh, well, I grab the one with the American flag, of course. Of course. Of course, there's a patriotism everywhere now, right now with the election uh, coming, so of course he's gotten those donuts. And uh, of course, usually I don't eat donuts because, hey, you have to think about your, well, how the campaign suit sits, <laughs> suit will fit you, but um, I haven't had dinner for, well, anything to eat for almost, almost 24 hours, so I think I need this. I bring greetings from the man who will be the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. He seems to be expecting you to to cheer. Do you? Yeah, I I cheer. I cheer. Oh, yes. Yep, we cheer. Again, I cheer along with everyone else. The pageantry of it all doesn't really seem important, but for them it is, so I do. I don't want to not be part of things. You see his sort of face shining up as you, as you do that, as if this is exactly what he expected to, to have happen, and, and that he's, he's so glad that he's met with enthusiasm. Have we met with uh, Mike Pence before? You have been around both Mike Pence and Donald Trump before, but aside from, you know, um, pointing out where uh, something he needs is, is located or, or uh, helping him with something. You haven't had any proper conversations with either um, Trump or Pence. You've always gone through uh, through Kellyanne, basically. So have, being this close to someone this important, it's a big deal. 
I, I'd like to suggest a selfie or a or a group picture of all the interns and Mike. Oh, and, and he he gladly uh, gladly accepts that, and, and uh, Kellyanne starts uh, getting a camera ready, and, and the interns line up uh, around Mike Pence, and he's holding up the the bags of donuts. I, I give the camera to Danielle, and and tell Danielle to take the picture. Oh, and then uh, Danielle looks a little bit disappointed at you, and oh, all right, and then she. And Kellyanne joins the the group picture and next to it, Mike Pence, and it it becomes a great picture, and you get it sent to you guys uh, afterwards. And um, it seems like Mike is here to to have some kind of speech, because that's that's what he does. He goes to places and he speaks. Um, I, I, w- I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for for your service. You're the ones that are making this campaign great, and we really couldn't do this without you. Uh, he holds his paper cup of, of what looks to be Sprite up as he speaks, as, as though it was a, a fancy dinner party and not a crowded apartment with uh, eight overworked interns. It's the young people of America, like like you, that are at the heart of this new conservative wave that is overtaking this nation and bringing it back to its roots. Whatever you do, you, you give it all and you do it well. You're always helping each other be the best version of yourselves by encouragement and example. You're leading yourselves, and that, my friends, that's how you lead America. Our movement, it's rooted in the Constitution, the Founding Fathers, the Revolution, faith, family, children, the American dream, with God, the Bible, working class families, tradition, freedom. He keeps droning on and on and on. Rowena... There's something off about this speech. I mean, aside from being boring as hell, that is, but that's what Mike Pence is all about, after all. There's something odd about the words that he's using. It sounds like droning, pre-rehearsed English language platitudes, but it doesn't really appear to mean anything the further he gets into the speech. And there's a string of... Ten unconnected syllables that he's repeating again and again, changing it slightly every time. I think to myself it's a little strange, but again, he's not exactly a master speech crafter, and uh, the rhetoric is supposed to be meaningless, kind of the point, or platitudes to get people to vote for you. That's uh, what I've been taught. I can't fully disagree with it. It does have a element of working, but I don't know. It's not the sort of way I would like to do things, really. No. But it is a bit strange, I suppose. Yeah. But it could just be that you're tired, because you, you are tired, and you've heard speeches like this a million times. Um, to to you, June, and uh, to, to Ian, this doesn't really strike you as strange. This sounds very much like a, a Mike Pence speech. Um, very successful uh, with the bass, and... Uh, I suppose it works quite well in this in this room. You you've clapped for him already, and and uh, there's cheer put in at appropriate times. And and uh, as as Mike Pence finishes his his speech, he, he lowers the cup and he, he nods again. Thank you, and and may God bless you and the United States of America. He says just as if this was a a, a grand speech uh, at some town rally. God bless you as well, Mr. Pence, and and God bless America. Yeah, God bless America. And uh, he smiles at you, and he's let out by Kellyanne. She just points to you, and uh, I'm right back to work, everybody. Ian, you're on Twitter again. Uh, Rowena June, um, I saw Matthew Dowd uh, over at ABC News. He's saying that Hillary has got like a 95% chance to win this election. Okay, I need you to find some alternative facts here that we can show to our candidate. You know, Reassure him that it will be all right. Can, can you find some stories for me to share with, with Donald? Oh, of course, Miss Conway. And uh, I sigh a little to myself again with the uh, methods used, but I put them out of my mind. I'm here to do a job and I will do it well. And I look to June and say, right, June, we, we can find something. Yes, of course. Uh, that's what we do. Yeah. And Ian, what do you do? I, uh, I return to my, uh, my favorite spot in the sofa. And as I pass June, I just kind of whisper, uh, uh, good job, June. And then I go to my seat in the sofa. Uh, when I sit down, I immediately take out my private phone and I text the picture of us with Mike Pence 
to my mother Mary. Uh, because I know she'll be very proud that we finally got to meet. Uh, or that, that I was uh, in the same picture as uh, Mike Pence. And she replies back very, very quickly with, with hugs and, and, and heart emojis and everything. And she seems very pleased. Yes. I also post it on my own social media, of course. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, all your friends, they they love that. They're big supporters and uh, you get tons of likes. It's really helps build your, your self-esteem even more, both like running the, the Trump Twitter and getting all the likes coming in, all the all the retweets, and then on your own uh, Facebook as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a high, you know? It's a high. Yeah. The evening just disappears in a hurried blur. It was good that you got those donuts because you sure won't have time for any dinner. June, now the day is finally coming to an end. It's around 11 p.m., and you're walking the halls of Trump Tower. Everything is glittering, but sterile. You left Trump Tower to do something. What was it? I actually had to get... uh, Well, I've been living in these clothes for so long, and I had to had to find somewhere where I could at least get fresh underwear. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing, but I haven't changed them in a couple of days now, and it was making me feel kind of iffy. Yes, and you were able to just sort that out. And uh, having passed by the, the protesters and the police cordon, um, seeing some people eyeing you, they've obviously perhaps seen you before and must suspect that you work here. And you get into this gilded elevator, and it looks like it will be just you. A little precious quiet time, just for yourself. But just as the doors are about to close, a man gently pushes them open and enters. He's wearing a suit and has a purple tie, tall and in his mid-thirties. Oh my god, that's Eric Trump, Donald's second son from his previous marriage to Ivana Trump. The family is tight, and if Trump listens to anybody, it's his family. Hey, this, this could be a real opportunity. Uh, mis- Mr. Trump, uh, uh, good evening to you. The smell of his cologne is really strong, more than a, a bit too much. And he's, you feel like he's, st- he's standing very close to you, very close. The elevator is small, but, but that is definitely a bit too close. You can hear uh, pleasant background music. And uh, answering what you tell him, he says, "Oh, you're you're one of the interns, yes. Uh, what was your what was your name again?" Uh, my name is June Newhouse, and I'm, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you and your family for giving me a chance to work work on something great like this. It's been a, a sheer honor to be able to help in whatever small way I can to to make this happen. You see that he has a tired look on his face, not one you would normally see, but something he only allows to come out here in this safe space that is Trump Tower. Campaign must be tiring for the family as well. Uh, what, what is it? What was it you did for the campaign again? He asks. A little of this and a little of that. I, I keep track of everyone, make sure they are in the right place at the right time, of course. Uh, someone needs to kind of be the shepherd, huh? Mm, I see. He appears uh, distracted and and thoroughly disinterested in what you have to say to this uh, polite question that he asked. But you're used to that. People like him don't want to speak about others. They want to speak about themselves. The elevator becomes quiet and the floors keep taking away. Memory, memory. Uh, What do you know about Eric Trump? Uh, Yes, he runs the Eric Trump Foundation. Um, And he got married uh, two years ago to a very beautiful woman. He's close with his sister Ivanka, and he spends a lot of time at the family's vacation home Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Uh, what do you do with this information? Do you want to speak to him more? Maybe try to get him to, to say something about, about himself? Uh, or, or do you let the, the silence just be? Well, I've, I've never been this close to him, and, and it kind of... Well, I can hear my heart beating uh, in my ears, because it's... Uh, I actually find him quite dashing figure I can't really let this opportunity to get to know him just a little bit slip so I I gather up my courage and I say um, 
I, Mr. Trump, I um, want to, I know it's uh, a bit late, but I want to congratulate you on your marriage. You have really, truly found a beautiful wife and uh, you look so, so beautiful together. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're, we're very, very happy and, and, and very, very blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be around so many, so many strong women uh, like my my wife and uh, and like like Ivanka, my sister. Really wish more women could be like like the both of them. Really, you know, they're they're both really self-made. You know, uh, speaking of Ivanka, for example, she's built that fashion line all, all by herself. She's truly a shining role model for all women uh, and girls in our country to show them that we can do whatever we set our hearts to. Yeah, and, and our family really are all entrepreneurs. Everyone take taking the few gifts that we're giving and, and building great things with it. Uh, we're special that way, I think. Not everyone can build something out of nothing. Dad has given us uh, great genes, like he, he likes to say. <laughs> he laughs loudly. Too loud. Are you sure we're born with a winning gene? And that innate ability to win. And he laughs again too loud, too much. You have a few more floors left, maybe another ten? Do you wish to bring something else up before you reach your goal? I I just hope this is campaign hasn't been too stressful on you and your beautiful wife and that you still get the time to cherish each other. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for it to be over. Head back to Mar-a-Lago, you know, after all this craziness is over, get some relaxation, play some golf, you know, maybe take a flight after that and go out on another hunting safari. There's a few more of the the big ones left to shoot before the wall is complete, I tell you. It sure seems like a beautiful place to be able to spend time with family. Oh yeah, Uh, definitely, it's it's wonderful, it's wonderful. He says as uh, the elevator uh, reaches your floor. He's heading further up, all the way up to the top, to Trump's penthouse. I kind of bow my head a bit, and I, I, I wish you a pleasant evening, and thank you again for the, for the pleasure of being able to help. Keep up the great work. We're, we're gonna win this one for sure. Uh, you see him uh, saying, and, and he swallows hard as he says that, as if, as if he's not at all sure that that's what's going to happen. I kind of straighten up a bit, and I say. We're gonna make America great again. Well, I'm, I'm going to the top, he says, and he laughs again, too loud, too much, as the, the scent of that cologne disappears up uh, in, the, in the elevator. And you have come out onto the floor where you're, you're supposed to be. You, um, you see the windows um, overlooking the New York skyline. You see the, the completed tower of one World Trade Center illuminated in the, in the distance. And, and you're sure, June, that in spite of, of this great experience that you just had interacting with someone very, very important, you're sure you're not going to sleep this night either. As you walk through the hallway past the faux Rococo golden mirrors, you you hear your shoes squishing as though you're walking through deep, gravelly mud. But it must just be the exhaustion, right? Did I step into something? Oh my god. No, it's just the floor that you're walking on. There's nothing strange. But you could swear that just a minute ago it felt like you were walking through mud. And you reached the apartment... It's one day before the election, November the 7th, and the cacophony of the iPhone alarms wakes you up yet again. June, as you thought, you didn't sleep. Former Attorney General uh, Janet Reno, the first woman to serve in that capacity, died last night. She won't get to see the first female president. You wonder if you will. Would you want to see that? Yes, of course, as long as it's the right candidate. I I do think, believe that women are just as capable as men. Even though I know from time to time Mr. Trump, Mr. Donald Trump, might not really share that sentiment with me, I, I still 
I mean, Ivanka would probably make a wonderful president one day. Uh, she's got so much good upbringing and values that she would probably be a splendid president. Indeed. And you feel fairly confident that that, that is what she sees for herself in the future as well. So, the future is bright. Rowena, how did you sleep? I slept okay, I suppose. A bit nervous about the upcoming events. I wake in the morning and realise I left my lens in, so my right eye is stinging a bit. It's alright though, I'll just quickly go and replace it. I'll be fine. And Ian, what about you? I slept actually surprisingly well, but only half of the night. The first half of the night I, I was busy up on social media because the uh, the picture I posted on Mike Pence really got a, a stir going. A lot of old friends contacted me and and um, and, and I actually um, there was some uh, flirting going on with some um, friends from back home actually some old uh, uh, high school friends and stuff so uh, I had to respond to that so that kind of kept me up but otherwise as soon as um, clock struck around two or three I I finally slept and I slept very deeply because I was exhausted of course and very happy it was a good day I think it was a fantastic day it was a really really good one and may today be yet another one of those it's uh, the last day before the election the last chance to make a difference and uh, we jump ahead a little bit into the morning and you're on your third or fourth cup of coffee already you have a, a press junket this morning in Trump's penthouse apartment. You're up there in this Baroque uh, living room with gold chandeliers and marble, and it's just so ostentatious. You feel like you've been transported back to Versailles before the revolution. I always find it quite funny because, obviously, back home, this sort of thing's been around for hundreds of years. Yeah. And yet here... Oh, it's only probably been built 10, 20 years ago, right? quite amusing really but it's nice I, you know it's nice <laughs> it is isn't it it's uh it is an imitation obviously a lot of money has been spent on it but there's something just missing looking at it with european eyes right there's something distinctly american about it right yes but you know it makes people happy and i'm in a good mood today i've been trying to make sure everyone gets their coffees and their snacks when they can even Ian, who, you know, likes to make fun of me a little, but it's fine. It's just friendly banter, right? Gotta put up with it. And the living room is all kitted out for the press to come interview Trump the, the day before the election with lights, microphones, and two large gilded chairs with white velvet cushions for Trump and Pence. The air is stuffy and the, the penthouse is crowded with reporters, techs, and campaign staff. This is the last major conference before election day, and it's such a massive, busy affair. Everyone is running around, attempting to make sure everything's perfect, and, and everyone is getting in everyone else's way, much to the chagrin of the candidates. Kellyanne is running the show together with Sean Spicer, the communications director from the RNC. He seems to be counting the number of journalists, approximating the size of the crowd gathered here. Rowena. I need you to make sure uh, Ray ends up in, in prominent spots wherever photos are taken, Kellyanne tells you. And, and Ray, you know, she's, she's one of your fellow interns, the, the only Hispanic. Uh, acceptably brown would be the term, meaning she's always trotted out as a symbol of diversity. And you are as well, so you kind of move together. So this is the uh, task that Kellyanne has for you. How do you approach this? Is this something you take on gladly? I do. I mean, I actually like Ray. She's a nice person. And even though <laughs> internally I wrinkle my nose at the reason she has to be in so many photos, I get it. It's all show. All fun and games, if you will. After this is when the real work will start. That's what I keep telling myself. It's all about what this is earning as opposed to what we're doing right now. It's just a bit of make-believing. Is it that harmful? I don't know. I, how does Ray feel about it? I probably would have tried to speak to her. 
you know that she's not particularly happy about it. Uh, she always sort of glares back whenever you give her a gentle uh, prod uh, to, to, to move somewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, she... You've heard her story. Her her father and her grandfather, they fought in the wars for, for the U.S. She's more American than most of the other interns, but yet she's sort of treated as, as this other... Um, and as this showpiece within the Trump campaign that is otherwise very, very white. But Rowena, are you going to attempt to do this? Because if you are, then I would like you to do the first roll of the night and act under pressure if that is what you intend to do. Yes, I'm going to give Ray my best smile and just try and explain the situation to her. I try and, you know, sympathize, because I do, and just say, you know, it's all just for show. It's stupid, really, but... You know, you're gonna get some good stuff out of this, aren't you? That's why you you, you joined as an intern, right? Same same reason as I did to, you know, get some really good stuff on your CV, and then and then you could actually do proper stuff, you know, better than this. She doesn't look particularly happy. Your challenge here, and the reason why this is an act under pressure role, is not because Ray is in any ways opposed to it. It's more about making it seem natural, and making it not seem as if you are. Mm planting this person. So, roll and act under pressure. I get a 10. You're able to get her into most of the the important photo ops, but there is maybe once or twice when it becomes a little forced. You're worried about what kind of photos will come out of this, and you, you see Kellyanne sort of eyeing you a little bit as, as you make one of these photo ops that are, are maybe not ideal. Um, she doesn't seem completely happy with uh, with your performance, but you get the job mostly done, though, so uh, mission accomplished, I guess. That's good. I know it probably did come across a bit forced, but I, I kind of feel it's a bit unfair, to be honest, because the whole thing is forced, and how could anyone expect more? She should have got June to do it. June always looks like she really is actually on board with all this. And Ian, um, Kellyanne has asked you to monitor the reporters that are live blogging this. See if you can find anyone who's particularly negative or positive among the the less obviously partisan media. Uh, we'll give them time according to what mood they're in. You know, I've already taken a selfie of myself in the room uh, to uh, and put it posted it on my own social media. And I also took a second picture of the media, of the, the journalists, uh, with a post where I wrote, uh, uh, Trump, Trump is accused of being bad, but he decided to invite the nation's biggest threat into his own uh, house or something like that. Yeah, and like hashtag fake news. Yeah. Yes, and and uh, and you do that, and again, just the likes keep coming in. They keep coming in, like everything else that you do on, online. Uh, finding these uh, these uh, reporters that are live blogging it would require you to do a little bit of searching um, under pressure okay. here. Um, I would like you to roll an investigate. So uh, roll uh, um, two d tens and then add one. Okay, so I, I I rolled a ten and a one. That means that you get the result twelve. You're able to to find that NPR, it seems like they're going very, very negative, which isn't that surprising. But NBC, they look promising. Okay, and, and who, can I find who it is in the room that is uh, writing? Yes, uh, you're able to do that with this uh, role. And um, you see uh, that man over there? That must be the guy from NPR. And that lady, uh, she's from NBC. She's the one that looks promising. She seems like she's fairly optimistic about um, the Trump campaign like she's having a good day might be good to give her some time with uh with the donald and and uh, the the other person that was writing negative who was that john nelson over there he seems to be focusing in on, on nitpicking in details and the, the economic plan and the trade plan um seems like he's going to be asking very tough questions if you give him time with the with the candidate okay so and who in the room is someone that i would like to impress would that be kellyanne yeah, you definitely would like to uh, impress Kellyanne with this knowledge that you're bringing. She's uh, ultimately the, the, the campaign manager. Um, so if you can give her this uh, information um, and, and sort of help change the, 
the schedule a little bit so uh, that uh, NBC gets uh, a lot of time and NPR gets no time, then uh, that's probably going to turn out well. Okay, I uh, immediately go towards Kellyanne. She looks up to you, uh, as you as you come up. Uh, so I tell her who's who's the one, uh, the, the NBC reporter, uh, that they should focus on. It's a very good find, very good find. All right. Did you find someone who was uh, particularly negative? Yes, and I, I tell them about the uh, the other person. I can't remember what they were called, but I, I show them all the info. I, I also say, I suggest that, do you want me to do something about this? Um... Well, uh, NPR are kind of important, so uh, if we give them less time, there should perhaps be some kind of reason for it. Perhaps Mr. Nelson could have some kind of, uh, I don't know, small accident involving coffee or something, and maybe needs to excuse himself, and then maybe he doesn't have so much time left. Yeah, I say, uh, say no more, and then I, uh, I give her a wink, and then I... I turn and I go over to um, uh, Rowena. Yes, and Rowena, you have uh, Ian coming up to you. I smile and say, oh, hey, Ian, um, something I can help you with? Um, yeah, do you have any more coffee? Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, sure. Let me just grab you one and I'll very quickly go to the nearest coffee machine and grab him a coffee. And I say, y- you all right, Ian? Y- you feeling the need for a bit of a buzz? Um, so, so I just, I just ignore uh, Rowena's comment, and I walk over to the reporter that is uh, writing the negative stuff, and I try to s- get really close to him, so I'm standing just behind him, and then I just kind of tip the coffee over his back. All right. Now I'm gonna then want you to uh, to do an act under pressure here to see if we can do this. Uh, so it doesn't seem very obvious what you're doing. There's a lot of cameras directed in this general area, so there's always a risk that you will end up uh, on camera doing this. So, um, act under pressure. Do you think this is something that um, Ian would be uh, particularly good at, or is this something that he might be quite bad at? I think he's quite bad at this, actually. <laughs> I don't think he's... Uh, I, don't, I mean, he. I don't think he's ever done this before, but I think this is his kind of shot to really get, get us some advantages uh, or some good credits with uh, uh, Kellyanne. So he's going to attempt here to do something that maybe he's not uh, hasn't done before. So try and then uh, roll me an act under pressure minus two. So I I rolled a seven and a nine. You know what? It goes very smoothly. Really, really smoothly. You feel really good about this. And and of course he gets the coffee on himself and just what's going on? Uh I, I immediately play. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I, oh my god, what, what? I'm, I don't, I, I didn't see you. I was, I was just walking. I, I'm so sorry. I'm oh my so god! Sorry. And, he st- and he starts rushing uh, out to towards the uh, where the bathrooms are. I, I follow him out just to kind of seem like I'm really keen on helping him. It's, it's an act, but I don't really care. But I try to pretend like oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I'll help you. And as soon as we come out, I, I start grabbing, like, paper towels and stuff to help him. So we, we move to June. You have been left more or less alone to manage the lower-ranking half of the room with the, the journalists from the smaller news stations. They're constantly jockeying to get ahead in line for an interview, and they're, they're trying to sneak in among the bigger news stations. You're really, really tired, and you're basically trying to prevent them from getting in the way of, of uh, the interviews that are now actually starting here. How are you trying to... Um, to do this, are you, um, yeah, how are you trying to prevent them? I look around, I, I'm fairly sure that there are security details here in the, in the room, mm-hmm. um, and I kind of motion to to Justin and uh, Marcus to come over here, and I, I ask them to actually, you know, stand in front of them, and uh, if I could get the, because they're really big guys, you know, so I, I actually want them just for a, a few seconds so I can speak to everyone properly, block uh, as much as they possibly can so that the people can, you know, focus on me instead. And I stand between the, the two guys, you know, mm-hmm. and I say, well, I actually I just hold my finger up and wait for everyone to look at me and, and kind of calm down a bit. 
All right. So we'll have you roll and act under pressure here then. Uh, so you uh, will roll yep. plus coolness and we'll see uh, how this goes, if you're able to take command here under uh, under this pressure. And, and uh, the, the pressure in this qu- in this case is, of course, that these guys, they need to get it. They need to get something out of this. They, they're, they have an opportunity here and they will try very, very hard to get it. No, uh, I think not sleeping for a couple of the days, weeks, I think, uh, kind of got the best of me, and I rolled a five. Uh, you roll a five, and you get uh, you get Marcus and uh, and the other guy um, up there, and, and you're trying to catch their attention, and you, you think maybe a few of them are, are um, actually listening to what you have to say, but you have completely missed a different part of the room and, and basically opened up uh, a path here for, for uh, the, these journalists to, to get uh, towards where the, the bigger news outlets are, and... <laughs> Crap, they're already there. Damn. Uh, I'm trying desperately to find anyone. Rowena, uh, Ian, someone that can help me try to manage the situation. And uh, Ian, you you see uh, June here. She's like basically chasing after these uh, journalists. Uh, and, and, and she's sort of looking at you with with a begging in her eyes, basically. What do you do? Well, I'm, I'm still kind of on a high from uh, the coffee stunt. So I'm not really, um, like, I'm, I'm so happy of doing that, that I, I don't think I'm really ready to do anything else for a while. I think I, I start by by texting my, my wife um, as I'm just, as I get back into the room. So I, I think my, my, my mind isn't really where it should be. I'm kind of more focused on bragging to maybe uh, uh, Rowena. Or even even seeing to it that uh, Kellyanne noticed my stunt. I was very confused by the whole coffee incident. All I saw was Ian take a coffee, go and spill it on someone, and then s- f- seem happy about it. Not entirely sure what's going on there, but I'm smiling and listening politely to the bragging because, again, he likes to brag, and I don't like to call him out on it. But I probably am only half paying attention, and if I did see June, I'd probably go and help her. And you you see what's happening here, that the June is, is chasing after these uh, journalists, but you're quite far away, and um, and um, June, you're, you're looking to Ian, but he's fully focused on his phone, and even if he looks at you, he seems like he doesn't really care. You get a look from Kellyanne that's, that's definitely not pleased with your job here, June. She's just like, really? Ugh. But, um, well, there are ways to work around everything, and, and um, while she does seem disappointed, the interviews do commence, and uh, the room sort of comes into order, and the the list of who's going to be interviewed when is now is now cleared. Well, I'm going to be, to be honest, focusing on the job. I don't really have time for the actual interviews, and none of it's important to me. So I'm just going to go behind scenes and just make sure everything's fine, make sure all the other interns are on the ball, make sure people have their coffees. I'll offer Ian another one because he lost his previous one, and I'll be like, Ian, do you, do you need another one? Uh, yeah, I'll have a, another coffee, please. I don't know if you saw what I just did with uh, with the other one. It's just I, I fixed this problem um, that just happened over there. I look just right a now. little confused and say, yeah. "Oh, there was a problem." Well, it's uh, it's a uh, need to know. I, it was Kellyanne who told me something, and uh, oh, you don't have to know that. But yeah, coffee would be great. Um, uh, some just uh, a dash of cream. Just a dash of cream. I know, I know how you like it. I- I've been making you coffee for the last few months. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So come on. <laughs> I go to make the coffee, just sighing to myself that Ian's always so. <sighs> what what is it about him and just not being even remotely polite? He doesn't even need to mean it. Never mind. Although, but the whole conversation I was having there was while looking in my in my phone, so I never even looked uh, uh, Rowena in 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 the eyes. I actually, I was quite shaken about my failed attempt to to uh, you know rope everyone in, uh, and I try not to let it show on the outside, but on the inside, my heart is basically breaking so i i actually exit the room for for a few minutes and i find a a remote corner 
and I actually start crying and uh, like you know desperately ugly crying uh, and then I try to perk myself up and make sure everything looks okay and, and I'll um, pull myself together and do I see this you're probably very focused on your phone, and uh, I think that probably uh, June is, has been trying to be very discreet about the, this she. However, might I see it, because I'm going around looking for everyone to check in. That's right, you are looking to, uh, to do that. Yeah, I, I would say that you you might have seen June moving off. Would you like to follow her? I do. I'm going to just maintain a bit of a distance, and then watch her have this little breakdown and feel very... Unhappy. I don't know what's wrong. I'm going to go up to June and be like, June, what, what's wrong? What, what are you doing? Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing is. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry, Rina. You shouldn't see me. Uh, please, I'm just trying to collect myself. Hey, it's, it's okay. Come on. Uh, calm down. I don't care about this sort of thing. I mean, what, what's wrong? What's upset you? No, oh, I just wanted to make a good job. <laughs> And and I just want Kellyanne. Uh, I mean, I mean Mrs. Conway to be, you know, happy with my work. And I, I mean, everything we've been working for these months. I, I mean, we're at the culmination of it all. And I kind of, I go and do this rookie mistake, and I, I just don't want to leave the entire campaign with like bad remarks or anything. It's, I'm, I haven't slept in forever and I, I don't even think I've eaten anything today. Okay, look, let me get you something to eat and I'm sure it's not as bad as you're making it. I mean, one little mistake isn't the end of the world, although I do think to myself that Miss Conway probably is the sort who would think it's the end of the world. <laughs> you should have seen the way she looked at me and, and now I'm missing the interview as well. Well, there's nothing being that important said in the interview. It's all just speech and silliness look just just okay okay I'll, I'll, I'll cover for you for five minutes i'm gonna get you something to eat and and it'll be fine all right i, I promise yeah. and uh you do that so i would like to ask now is uh, is anyone going to be uh, actually looking at these interviews or are you going to be keeping uh busy with different things here I just want to be in the room with Donald Trump and Mike Pence. That's the, my main priority. And, of course, uh, uh, Kellyanne. But I also, what I want to do is, the journalist that got the coffee on the back, is he back in the room? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I try to sneak to the side and just take a picture of him uh, with my phone. Uh, I don't post it anywhere. I, I just do that uh, uh, just to do it. I, I I don't know why I do it. I just I just take a picture of the guy with the coffee on the back. You do that, and you have a a, a picture that is uh, less than flattering of uh, this man in this uh, very important uh, interview space, and uh, you then get the opportunity to actually see some of the interviews happening. And Trump says what he normally says. He you know he loves talking about how he loves trade. He's a master trade. He's going to win a trade, bigly win a trade. And Pence nods in agreement, and he seems to be a million miles away. And Ian, you see, you see spiderweb-like cracks forming in Trump's interview makeup. Perhaps his foundation is broken. What do you do? I don't think I would really dare to kind of comment on that. I I look at uh, Kellyanne to see if she seems to be reacting at it in some way. No, not at all. Not at all. You look to Kellyanne and then you look back and it's gone. Hmm. Now Pence is speaking. And you can see his teeth seeming to lengthen beyond his lips. And I, you can't believe that, so you, you blink. And it snaps back. Everything is just like it was before. What do you do? Um, I assume that I am uh, hallucinating or not feeling that well. So I, I leave the room and go towards the the bathroom that I was in before with the journalist. You head over there and you, I suppose you get some water in your face or something like that. Try to Yeah, I try to drink some, some water and just try to uh, focus. I have in my pocket, I have some, um, uh, because I, I collect very expensive brands of... Uh, of different skin care products. I put some moisturizer in my face too after the water so that it doesn't dry up. 
and it feels good. It feels it feels great. You feel like yourself again. <sighs> what the hell was that? It must just be must just be hallucinations. You must just be uh, because of how tired and exhausted you are. Um, is there any like food or anything to eat uh, close by, or is there uh, uh, like anything I can pick up? Yeah, there is in the penthouse. There's uh, a small buffet table sort of uh, set up for the journalists. Some. Uh, you know, bread and, and, and juice and, and coffee and, and those kinds of things. So you're able to uh, to get some food if you would like. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I take, like, something with sugar in it so that I kind of wake up. Mm. Yeah, and it feels good. And um, June, you, uh, you are, uh, you're having a moment. And Rowena, you are moving around trying to help the other in- interns. And, uh, and as you're moving around, you feel a hand... On your, on your behind, on your butt. Someone standing close to you. I kind of freeze a little and immediately turn round. Uh, whoops! Guess I should watch where I'm going. It's a tech, uh, one of the, the tech people. Uh, he says with a smug smile. And I suppose you you would look at the the hand that is still on your butt, right? I would, and I look at him very keenly with my left eye and sort of just stare at him, waiting for him to remove his hand? As you look at the hand you see that it's bloated and broken and covered in maggots. I blink and sort of let out a little sort of gasp of surprise as I slap the hand away. Uh, Sorry, he says and he starts hurrying away. And you look again and it looks like a normal hand. I'm not entirely sure what just happened. I rub my eye a little and feel a bit sick. And I just kind of try and put it aside. I, I feel very uncomfortable, but it's it's over now. And I'm just going to find myself something to drink, I think. Probably been thinking too much about other people. That's right. That's right. You need to think more about yourself. You're here for yourself, after all. And the press junket ends successfully, uh, you could say. Um, Kellyanne seems mostly happy with how things went. The, there wasn't any real d- difficult questions posted to Mr. Trump, and uh, there were a few interviews that came in there that were really kind of pointless with uh, w- with news outlets that uh, aren't really going to give you any views, but, uh, well, it can't be helped. And um, the event ends, and Ian, you are now on your way back to the top floor to help clean out some of the the hardware that was moved into Trump's penthouse. You've been moving back and forth, sort of helping out with this equipment. You're getting into an elevator, and as you do that, you see that someone is already in the elevator that you're about to enter. It's someone you recognize, of course. It's it's Ivanka Trump. It's Trump's daughter. She looks up as the, the doors open, Will you go into the elevator with her? Uh, yes. Then uh, you get into the elevator with Ivanka Trump. I, I just walk in, but I kind of like give her a smile and a nod, like as as if uh, we know each other, but we don't. But I still do that kind of like colleague kind of uh, smile and a nod. And then I just stand to the side and without looking at her. Mm. And... And she smiles back at you with that polite smile that she has. I mean, she's she's beautiful, right? Um, and you are in this elevator that's quiet except for this pleasant background music, and the the, the floors kept keep uh, keep ticking away. I said I said I tried to like without moving my because I'm just looking straight forward at the at the door basically the the elevator door, mm-hmm. and I say something like, uh, you know, it's uh, isn't it strange that people actually compose this type of music <laughs> she uh she giggles uh sort of politely <laughs> you're right yeah. what a job that would be you are one of the the interns right oh yeah yeah i, I turn and i say uh yeah um uh, ian alexander i'm i'm one of the interns i work with the mainly with the social media accounts and uh um, ah, that's you me. You take care of my yeah. father's uh, Twitter now, then. Well, it's nice to meet you, she says with a, a trained and pleasant smile. I, I say jokefully, uh, I, I basically am your father. <laughs> she giggles again and then goes back to looking totally focused and sharp 
after that. Mm. As if she's done with this little polite conversation that you've been having. Yeah. I, I look forward for just a short while. Then I uh, I turn back and I say, uh, I think we're going to win. And as you say that, the, the lights in the elevator, they flicker briefly. And you feel something towering over you. Something big. Milk white eyes without irises and pupils stare at you. Swollen organs pulsate under semi transparent, deathly white skin. And now all is back to normal again, and Ivanka smiles at you. Of course, we're gonna win. My father is a winner, he doesn't lose. And um, just as she says that, the door is open and she starts moving out. Good luck on Twitter. My father can't wait to have his account back. Uh, I I don't really know what to respond because I'm kind of still shocked from the whole uh, weird blinking experience. So I just kind of murmur a weird kind of, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, gonna, it's, yeah, that, oh, yeah. And then the doors close. I kind of punch my, my, my thigh because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of angry that I didn't have anything like smarter to say. That's right. What's going on, anyways? All these things you're seeing. Is this? Do you need to get some medications or something? I mean, this is this is getting bad. Yeah, but I'm mostly angry that I didn't have anything clever to say when she left the elevator. <laughs> That's right. You've got your eyes on the prize. But I'm I'm also kind of uh, uh, I find it weird with the blinking stuff. I guess I would assume that I'm kind of tired or fatigued or uh, something like that, right? There's a a thousand ways to rationalize what just happened, and and stress is is definitely the most, the best explanation that you have. You've you've seen some of the other interns acting weirdly, and uh, some of the campaign staff as well. Stress is really high here, and it can really mess with people's minds, and perhaps this isn't so strange. It's, yeah, the mind is weird sometimes. Yeah, I think I, I want to return to my sofa and maybe rest a bit. And you're able to do that, actually. And it becomes afternoon. And you have gotten a little rest. And June and Rovina, you are also back now. June, you've been able to clean up and you look perfect. I've gone to just change my lens because my eye was itching a little. So I just made sure to take a moment to myself, go in the bathroom remove the lens, look at myself a little with my, you know, white eye, and then quickly get my new lens and put one back in. As you come out of the bathroom, Kellyanne is standing there. Rowena! Miss Miss Conway, hi! Oh, good to see you. Sorry, it was just uh, freshening up a little. Uh, how are you? Are you well? Oh, yeah, definitely. And you're now in in this uh, dormitory where all the other interns are at, and, and she... she speaks to you in, in sort of a normal voice so that the others can hear it as well. Um, Rowena, Mr. Pence wants to see you in his office. Th- that's that's huge, right? I mean, the vice, the vice presidential candidate wants to see you, asking specifically for you. And as as you hear this, the, the eyes of all the other interns turn on you. Well, that's a Wonderful. Um, of course, I'll go right away. Uh, do, do you know why? Is, is there anything I should bring? Does he need something? She just kind of shrugs like, no, just, just do what the, the man says, I guess. I mean, to be summoned to um, to the boss's office is a big deal in any job. Uh, in this Trump-Pence campaign, it's almost unheard of. And you know exactly where to go to uh, to get there. Mike's, Mike Pence's office is in Trump's ostentatious penthouse. So um, I suppose you head over there, or do you want to do something before you go? No, I head immediately. I make sure I look presentable. My, my blonde hair is long, but I keep it in a bob. You know, it's stylish. And uh, yeah, I'll make my way there as fast as possible. I'm a little anxious, because I'm not entirely sure why he'd want to see me. But I'll go and see him. Why not? When you walk uh, across the room to get to the elevator, I... I smile widely at you and, and do thumbs up, you know, and look really, I'm looking at you, like, really encouragingly. Yes, and I'll give you a thumbs up back, and I'll also look at Ian and sort of smile, almost a little smugly, because I bet he'd like to be 
in my situation. Maybe he would be if he was a nicer person. You make it to Mike Pence's office. It's very obviously a spare room in this ostentatious penthouse, and it's been hastily converted into the vice presidential nominee's space until such time as the new office can be finished. Uh, Pence has filled it with homey touches like braided rugs, kitschy American flag accessories, and even a plugged-in electric fireplace in the corner. It's uh, overly warm and surprisingly underlit. It's kind of dark in here. All the things in here create a completely different feel from the glittering sterility of the rest of Trump Tower. You find yourself feeling a bit claustrophobic in here. Pence stands up as you come in, and and Gavin, one of the other interns from Harvard, he's you see him sitting there typing on, on a sofa in the background. Pence can't be alone with women, so you suspect his presence here may have something to do with that. Makes you feel relieved and, and still a bit special, I suppose. This is true. Well, I'll go in and nod my hair to be like, Mr. Pence, uh, you wanted to see me. I Please sit. Welcome. Can I offer you some coffee or tea? Oh, I wouldn't mind a, a, a tea if, if you're having a drink as well. He uh, snaps his finger and, and uh, Gavin comes over with uh, with tea. It's excellent. It's much better than what you what you guys are getting from the cafeteria. It's good. I, I, I have a drink and I smile. Again, I don't really know the man or have any real interest in him, but I mean, I'm eager to hear what he has to say. I see the polls are tightening. Uh, there's clearly hope. You've seen the same thing. Fox News reported that the that the, the difference, uh, the, the lead that Hillary has, is shrinking. God will deliver this to us, he says, and he smiles, but in that way that he does, that never really quite reaches his eyes. And you see his hands, they're sort of fidgeting like nervous spiders, as he says it. I smile and I nod. I don't really say anything to that, because, you know, I myself am unsure if we are going to win or not. I think it's a very close race either way. But I smile and say, yes, well, I'm sure God will reward those who've been working hard for him. Indeed. Well, I I called you here because I've noticed your contribution to the campaign. I think it's really super. Really. He looks into your eyes and uh, you think he's going to ask you something here. Maybe it's what you've been waiting for. Maybe this is the big opportunity. I'm very excited. I mean, at the end of the day, this has all been about the work. I, I, I'm really hoping that I'll be able to take this back home and really get a good start to a well, job in English politics, really. Rowena, I, I would like you... I would like you to choose another intern for a special commendation on election night. Is there anyone you think that's really deserving of this commendation? Someone that's worked extra hard? Well, yes, actually. Uh, are you familiar with one of the interns called June? June Newhouse. Yes, yes, that uh, that pleasant uh, young woman, uh, young lady. Yes, of course. Yes, I am. I'm. I know her. And how do you feel as he as he says this to you? Because you you see him uh, you see him smiling as he as he gets that answer back, as if as if he was expecting that, as if he was expecting expecting you to to react in the way that you did getting an opportunity and then seeing it snatched away it's at this point i kind of then feel a bit awkward maybe maybe i was just here for this but at the same time i don't know doom was really worried about failing and maybe this is a way of helping her out and again he said he liked my stuff that's all I really needed, right? I just need the, you know, recommendations to move on from this. But June really wants this. And of course, I wasn't going to mention Ian, because Ian, well, I don't think he deserves anything, really. I feel bad for thinking that immediately, because he's not actually that bad a person. I just sometimes wish he was a bit more appreciative of those around him. But no, I feel this is a good thing to do. If I can just give June the go-ahead now, surely that can overcome any th- silly incorrection she did today and i'll sort of clear my throat to go yes june really cares about the work she's done here she's really dedicated to the job she punishes herself even for the smallest things and honestly i think she's got a good future ahead of her and yeah i'd if you ask me to 
recommend anyone, I, I, I'd go with June, sure. He smiles and he says, Thank you, Rowena. That's, that's very kind of you. Um, we will make sure to, to, give a, to give a big commendation to June then. Well, I, I, that's really all I wanted to ask you. Uh, he stands up and uh, you see Gavin rising up to, to start showing you uh, out. He's, you can see him sort of smirking at you, Gavin. Sort of give Gavin a bit of a look. But I, you know what? I don't care. I, at the end of the day, I feel I've done the right thing. And I'll say, oh, thank you very much, Mr. Pence. And thank you very much for appreciating my contributions as well. I'm really hoping to... Uh, I've learned a lot here, and I'm really hoping to use it for the good of people on my end of the ocean as well as yours. He nods, and uh, Gavin leads you out, and the door is closed behind you. And you're uh, back here on the top floor now. You, You need to find a way to get back to, um, to to the office you have a lot of things to do after all how, how do you feel now after this do you feel do you feel good was this all you had hoped for this was supposed this was gonna be a big chance and it seems to have been now about June but maybe that's okay it is it, it is I, I like June and you know uh, I mean what I don't know what I expected really I mean what was he gonna ask me to stay here I don't know if I'd wanted to really it's fine like I said he said he liked my work and that's still something at, at the end of the day it's all about the work I put in and and I'm sure June will be thrilled when she gets this information about her uh, that's a good thing the elevator won't come like it's not moving it, just, it takes forever nothing nothing nothing's happening it's the clock is ticking Oh, that's a bit annoying. I kind of rub my right eye in irritation. Look around with my left. Any stairs I could take? Yeah, yeah, there is. There's the, um, just a stairwell. Uh, the door's over there, so it's not that far. I mean, you have, like, the top third of the of the building is, is for, um, sort of Trump's offices and, and, and uh, for his inner circle, and you're, you're part of that. So, yeah, maybe just go down a few floors if the elevator won't come. Yes, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, probably a bit of a malfunction or something. I'll, I'll go take the stairs nice and quickly. You enter the stairwell that it's it's mostly dark, but it's lit in spots by uh, LED lights. They obviously don't want to waste money on lighting up an area that no one ever uses. And you start moving down. And what are you thinking about as you're climbing down? Hmm. I'm thinking about that flight back home. I'm looking forward to it, I think. Yes, just a few more days, and then things can get a little easier. I'm definitely going to have some time off, I think. I think I've earned it. I've been working really, really hard. And yes, I just make my way down the stairs quickly. Not too quickly, of course. I don't want to be all flustered when I get to the bottom. Mm. But the stairs won't end, Rowena. They just keep going down and down and down. There's no doors. I kind of do a little double take and look around... I kind of try and get my vision back to where I've come from. I must have made a mistake. I'm going to go back up the stairs to the door I came in. It's just darkness and stairs. How dark is it? You can just see maybe two meters ahead of yourself. You're in pitch black darkness and stairs, and it's completely quiet. No, no, not quiet. There's a sound in the darkness that's surrounding you. Is that something rattling? Echoing in the empty dark stairwell? There it is again. I kind of start to panic a little. I'm trying to see where the sound's coming from. Obviously my peripheral vision isn't the best, but I do try and it's see what I there. can see. Up the stairs. Yeah, it's coming from up the stairs. Will you move towards this noise or will you move away from it? Good to move away from it. I, d I don't want to be here. I, I, I start running down the stairs. I can hardly believe I'm doing it, but I'm suddenly just filled with this strange panic at this situation, and I just want to get to the bottom of these stairs. They will get to a door eventually. A roll for act under pressure. Ten. And you make it to a door down there. You just rush, you rush, you feel... You start to feel the sweat um, coming, and, and um, as you move down, you, you have high heels on, right? Yes. Yes, and, and as you are able to get through the door, the, the heel breaks. 
But you find yourself out again in Trump Tower on the floor where your your office slash dormitory is. Hmm. Good. I stumble into the hallway. I, I, I actually swear a little as I see my heel breaks and I kind of just take the shoe off because there's no point walking in a broken heel and I just look back to the stairway. There's nothing strange about it and there's no noise coming. And you notice that night is starting to fall on Trump Tower. But New York remains bright out there. One World Trade Center gleams in the distance. I'm going to make my way back to my office. I don't feel very well now, and I feel embarrassed at... I must have just... There must have just been, like, someone coming down the stairs, and I don't know why I panicked. I feel very foolish. Yes. And we... We move into the night. June... It's five o'clock in the morning, and you're about to finally fall asleep. When you hear Danielle singing something, what is it that she's singing? I'm not sure, but it sounds like a lullaby. But I can't recognize the words. Is that Russian? I couldn't tell. I I don't speak Russian, but... uh, It's... But I kind of recognize the tune. It's some kind of lullaby, I'm sure of it. Yes, you are. She's wearing her pajamas, um, singing the song until she gets into the middle of the common area. She's sleepwalking. And you see her stopping. Do you, uh, do you do anything? Or do you just allow her to, to keep going? No, I actually... I gently try to walk up to her as to not wake her up and I'm, I'm in a soft voice I, I try to beckon her a bit to see if I can you know get her attention like Danielle Danielle sweetie what are you doing here you get her attention she she looks towards you and in a loud voice she proclaims She's almost here. Make room for the overseer. She who will bind the agreement. Rowena, this wakes you up as well. This loud voice. And Ian, too. I'm a little confused. I kind of get out of bed. Uh, I obviously haven't had time to put my lenses in, so... But it doesn't really matter, because I I just poke my head out the door, and I'm like, what's uh, going on? And, uh, June... Danielle, she goes to lay down on on the sofa here. Such beautiful yellow lights. Sunflowers. I I, I just look around the room to make sure that she hasn't woken anyone else up. Um, Ian, you have also woken up, um, but you see that the the noise is starting to go away here now uh, as as Danielle again is sleepwalking. I think I take up my phone. And uh, I I want to document this for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I start I start filming uh, Danielle. And you do that, and and uh, you're able to catch catch what's what what goes on from this point as she is sort of laid down on on uh, or she's about to lay down on the sofa, and, and June is standing there uh, over her. Did I get the uh, the Russian singing? You would come in right as she spoke in this loud voice. Um, okay. So you you missed that part. Danielle looks up to you, uh, June. Uh, I'm so thirsty. So so so, sweetie. Just go to go to sleep. I'll make sure everything is okay. Okay. Just just lie down here, and and I'll go get you a blanket, and and everything will be fine. You you need your sleep. It's an important day tomorrow. It is. Uh- can I can I turn to June and I as I'm filming I say she's fucked up. Oh, Ian, honestly, aren't we all a bit stressed at this point? I don't I I think she's a liability. I think we should we should tell Kellyanne. She, she's just sleepwalking. I don't know. I don't think that's sleepwalking. I think that's that's a that's the first sign of mental illness. I kind of walk over to Ian and coming out of my dorm in my own pajamas and I just sort of notice that he's been filming and I say, oh, and I suppose constantly filming people isn't a sign of mental illness as well, Ian. 
put that away. Um, I I put it. I, I stop filming and I put the uh, the phone in my pocket and I say, um, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Someone's doing something to to keep this uh, campaign going." Oh, g- filming her having a bit of a sleepwalk in the morning is. Yes, of course, Ian, whatever, well done. Um, is she all right, June? What's going on? And just as you ask that question, there's a banging on the door. And uh, it's opened, and, and uh, Rob, one of the campaign staffers, uh, comes in. It's still five o'clock in the morning. You, had, you should have had at least one more hour of sleep. Get get up, everyone. We, we need you immediately. Mr. Trump's wife has arrived with what, what seems to be her entire wardrobe from Mar-a-Lago. We need your help. Right now. Come on. We've got to get back to the lobby. Yeah, yeah, um, just, let's see if we can wake up Danielle, and we need to start moving, okay? Um, uh, let's just leave Danielle, I'm, I'm sure Rob, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, straight off, yeah, let's go. Yes, uh, so Ian, you start moving, um, June and Rowena, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna run to throw my clothes on, but I kind of don't feel like, I can't go out there with out my lens on oh look I see Rowena hesitating and I say uh, Rowena maybe you can stay here with Danielle and you see I, I'm i still I haven't really gone to bed yet so I'm still dressed and you just make sure she's okay sure all right sure yes yes that's that thanks June that that'd be great and I'll yeah stay with Danielle and use this time to actually get myself properly ready and by the way, thank you so much for uh, earlier today. It, I'm so sorry about the whole... It just... It, the stress just got to me, okay? It won't happen again. Hey, don't worry about it. Besides, I uh, think you might actually... Let's just say you might have a pleasant uh, surprise waiting for you. Well, we all will at the end of this, right? Hopefully. We'll see. Anyway, thanks. I'll Yeah, thank you. And I kind of look a little self-conscious as I'm, you know, not... I haven't done myself up, but uh, I smile and I'll let you get on your way. And um, Danielle wakes up and she goes to, to briefly open the windows. And the chilly morning air flows into the room. It's, it's refreshing, but it gets awfully cold very quickly and you start getting ready. Whereas um, June and Ian, you are making your way down to the lobby mm. where you see, uh, indeed, Melania Trump and a struggling doorman uh, that's trying to help her. Outside the tower, you can see the protesters already having started to gather outside the police cordon. They're early, but today is special after all. Today is Tuesday the 8th of November. This is election day. Melania is in a plush sunflower yellow coat and surrounded by luggage both bigger than she is and worth more than all of your total paychecks combined. She smiles and she looks relieved as she sees the two of you. Good morning. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry to trouble you. I really appreciate the help. We, we haven't met. I'm Melania. I um, step ahead of June and shake her hand. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. You, you really are lifesavers. She shakes your hand. And uh, she then makes uh, a point to come and shake your hand as well, June. She's so different from the other Trumps, isn't she? She is striking. I mean, she moves with, with such grace and poise it's 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 breathtaking <laughs> can i say something i i i want to say like some i i say something like uh, uh i i just want you to know my my wife ashley finds you a enormous uh, role model and uh she would be very uh, jealous of me meeting you uh getting to meet you up in person uh you're a huge uh, role model for for everyone that's what i say before i start immediately helping Oh, thank you very much. And she speaks with this uh, sort of Slovenian accent that uh, that she has. And you're reminded of the fact that uh, she grew up poor and not with a silver spoon in her mouth like all the other uh, Trumps. And you um, you start helping her out with the luggage. The doorman helps as well. And uh, you move towards the elevator. And as you're doing this, uh, she, she speaks and she says, uh, I just came in from uh, Mar-a-Lago. It's, uh, it's so lovely this time of year. It's cold and grey, and, and over there the sun is always uh, shining. It seems like a beautiful place to spend time with family. Oh, yes, and family is so important. Don't you agree? I say that, uh, oh, yeah, California is really beautiful, I say, because I don't know where Mar-a-Lago really is. 
Ah, oh, she, she sort of smiles politely, not, not intending to point that out. She's way too polite for that. The elevator starts moving up as you get the lug luggage into to the elevator, and then you start carrying it towards the, the penthouse apartment. And again, you're greeted by the gold, the chandeliers, the art in the ceilings. And as soon as the door has opened, you notice Melania's demeanor changing. Her expression goes from this lively, animated, sunny, to looking bored and disinterested. Put the bags over there and over there. I take it uh, New York this time of year might not be as exciting as mar lago She doesn't say anything to that. She's ignoring you. And uh, Trump comes to greet her, and there he is. That's Donald Trump right there. He seems to make an attempt to reach out to touch her, but it's as if they're separated by some sort of invisible wall. Seems to be time for the two of you to leave. Good day to both of you, and God bless America. Yeah, God, God bless America. And Trump gives you the, the thumbs up and uh, gives that, uh, that winning smile that he has. And as you start leaving, Melania briefly waves and calls out, try to keep each other safe, as, as though it was some funny Slovenian foreign farewell. Trump looks irritated at this. And you stand outside the apartment, just the two of you. Safe? Uh, I think we're as safe as... Uh, on, uh, I think this currently is the safest place on this planet, wouldn't you say, Ian? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, let's uh, let's get some some work done, right? The day disappears as in a blur with your tasks and uh, you're, you're helping to prepare for the election party that's going to be in the, in the grand ballroom. Uh, the big official one is going to be in, at, the, at the Hilton, but the, this one that's here is for specially invited guests only. Uh, it's a party designed to celebrate the victory, or at least to make a lot of deals. Win or lose the election, Trump is going to find a, a way to make a lot of money from this, and, and you know that. And uh, it becomes evening, and the votes have begun being counted, and you know everyone's always looking at the TVs, and... Kellyanne comes up to you. She's wearing a, a red dress with black zigzags on it. She's already dressed up for the evening. Um, and uh, Rowena, you uh, are now also here. She's come to the um, uh, to your your uh, uh, dorm and, and to your office. All right, we're almost there now. I can't believe it. I, I know you're all exhausted, but just a little bit more. All right, I believe in you. Thank you. Uh, we all worked really hard, but well, we're here now, and uh, hopefully. Well, I think it's going to go well, right? And as I'm saying this, I do keep giving Danielle a bit of a glance, as I have been concerned about her. How has she been through the day? Um, Danielle has been fine after that. Um, she's quite quiet uh, as a person, really, and, and always looks impeccable, blonde, and, and just perfect, and she does the copy editing. And, and, and she doesn't seem to have made any many mentions of what happened during the night. I suppose she is used to the fact that you, you have seen her sleepwalking, and it seems like most of you at least have accepted it. That's fine. In that case, I feel a bit more reassured, and I say, yes, and, and once again, thank you very much for the opportunity you've given me. I've really learned a lot here, and it's been an experience. Hmm. Well, we're not quite there. We still have some things left to do. I'm going to need you to help me with two things, all right? Uh, but we need to do both of the things at the same time, all right? Because we don't have time. Okay, I'm going to need two of you head over to the Democratic headquarters. Uh, Mr. Trump wishes to present his opponent with a gift, you know, as a as a show of good sportsmanship. Um, and the, the other one I need helping me um, uh, direct the guests here in the ballroom. Uh, we need to ensure that the people getting access to Mr. Trump are, are really big donors and, and uh, those that will be of use to him going forward. Everyone is going to want to meet him tonight, so his time is extremely valuable. So that person's job will be to maximize it. I'll take that. All right, Ian, you uh, immediately jump at that job, which leaves uh, uh, June and Rowena uh, with the trip to the Democratic headquarters. Certainly. All right, here is the gift. And, and she hands over a bottle of scotch, 100 years old. Oh, very nice. <laughs> she uh, smiles. Oh, <laughs> she's going to need it. We shall begin with uh, the trip to the Clinton uh, election night headquarters. I say something a bit sarcastic like, uh, oh, and uh, you two, uh, don't stay there too long. Don't have too good a time, or something like that. Don't worry, Ian, we won't. I'll be here with you in the end. Don't worry. 
I just glare at you. June and Rowena, you arrive at the Clinton election night headquarters at uh, Javits Center in Hell's Kitchen. The building is glass and steel and lit up in festive colors. They're clearly expecting to win. The symbolism of the glass ceiling above where she would hold her victory speech is not lost on you. She has been planning for this for a very, very long time. And you are met immediately right at the entrance by Clinton's interns. They, they look, look just like you, probably come from the same schools. Just as underpaid, underappreciated, and exhausted as well, you, you would guess. They look at you uh, suspiciously and, and whisper amongst each other. I do my best to smile and be polite. After all, it's like you said. They're pretty much the same. I mean, we're all here for the same reasons, really. That's the funny thing about these things. Like, everyone's just trying to do the best for, well, the people, right? At least that's supposed to be the idea. Indeed. All right, well, we will take you to see Mrs. Clinton, uh, they say. And uh, they begin leading you. Do you do you follow? Yes, and I give Jude a look and I say, well, hopefully this won't be too difficult. No, uh, if nothing else, uh, Mrs. Clinton is always polite and cheerful. And you are led to Hillary's offices uh, here, which is it's just a temporary desk, actually, with a few computers and a TV hanging on the wall with CNN on. Um, she's wearing a black pantsuit with a purple shirt underneath. She stands up behind the desk as you come in and comes out to, to greet you. Welcome! You can see on her face that she appears tired and a, and a bit aloof. Uh, Mrs. Clinton, hello! Um, just really pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, we've just come to give you a little offering tonight, a little gift. Uh, ah, you've come with gifts from the Donald, I understand. Uh, good to see he hasn't fired you yet, <laughs> she says, almost succeeding at making a pop culture reference that would have been legitimately funny a decade ago. Um, Mr. Trump just wants to extend his uh, thanks for a, a worthy opponent, but um, we all know after tonight there can only be one in the seat. And do you hand over the gift? Yes. And as you uh, you hand over the gift, she she accepts it. You can uh, you can see her expression darkening as she sees what it is. Her hands trembling a bit. And in that moment, the lights dim and buzz somewhat. And then things go back to normal. Right after that, she is short when she replies. Well, oh, thank you. You have done what you were sent here to do. I think it's time for you to leave. Of course. Uh, you have a busy night ahead. Uh, good, good luck. And I smile, a little awkward. I feel oddly unwelcome. And perhaps that's correct. After all, we are the opposition. Rowena, her, her shadow seems to swell. And you could swear that you saw her bones rippling beneath her skin. You can smell wet earth. Hmm. I kind of just back out of the room and give June a look and say, let's get going then. And I kind of suddenly want to be out of there quite quickly, actually. And I make my way out quickly. And you're leaving the Javits Center, and as you do that, June, you hear the low-frequency rumbling of something akin to an earthquake. Too low to register on the Richter scale, but high enough that your ears pick it up. Did you, did you feel that, Rowena? Did I? You did. did. Oh. Yes, I, I did. Um, that's uh, just something, one of those low-grade tremors, right? You have those here, right? I say, sounding very uncertain of that. We're, we're not really on a fault line, but... I mean, it happens, I guess. It, sometimes it can even be the, the underground, but this is... I don't know. I frown a little, and I say, as I head back to our car, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to this all being over, actually. I'm starting to think for maybe the stress as, uh, you know, uh, being in this environment, like, I I'm looking forward to going home for a bit. I mean, what are you going to do when this is over? <laughs> Sleep, I guess. Uh, I, I... Yeah, sleep. That's what I'm gonna do. I guess this whole thing would 
must seem like a circus to you. It's not even close to what you guys have at home, is it? Oh, I don't know. We <laughs> Maybe in some ways it's not really any different. And I sort of rub my right eye, which again is aching a lot, uh, which annoys me, but what can I do? You know, in, under different circumstances, we might even be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I blink a little at that and sort of go, yeah, feeling a little hurt, the way she put that, to be honest. And that's an excellent place to cut that scene. And we cut back to the ballroom in Trump Tower. Ian, the ballroom here is, is the grandest you have been in during your life. There's huge chandeliers that glitter over expensive carpets and shine off of mirrored walls. Everything is larger than life, and if you saw Marie Antoinette walk out on stage, she would fit in perfectly. Trump and Pence and their families are on a raised dais, and uh, there are several hundred meters of buffet tables and bars set up around the room. Uh, it's packed to the brim with Wall Street bigwigs, CEOs, venture capitalists, and all sorts of other wealthy supporters of Trump's campaign. The room, it smells of, of caviar, of champagne, tasteful perfume, and of, and of desperation, of fear, of greed. Greed is king here and holds absolute sway over this room. Danielle and Gavin, also other interns, are, are working with you here to, to, to manage the crowds. You, you're in charge, though, and to prioritize who gets access to Mr. Trump. Let's see how this, uh, this goes. Um, do you take any particular approach to uh, controlling the crowds here? Um, not, not really. I think I'm more kind of just a, an observer. I try to, um, I'm, I'm twittering uh, and working social media frantically. Um, I try also to gain eye contact with uh, uh, Ivanka uh, that I met in the elevator because I kind of feel like we have uh, some kind of connection. Like I feel like I want to kind of uh, talk to her again to maybe present myself in a better manner. But without, re I, it's not like I'm storming through the room looking for her. But um, I, I just try to seem as important as I can. So I try to distance myself as much as I can from from Gavin and the others, and uh, I, I try to like really play the role of the uh, the alpha male. Right, you do that, and uh, and you try to to catch her her attention. One of the 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 men here that is is being let through by uh, Danielle and, and Gavin. You, you recognize him. It's a, it's a very prominent venture capitalist from uh, Silicon Valley. He, he sees, of course, you are you're the man here. So he he leans over to you and and he says, "If you would be um, kind enough to well um, turn back my friend over there," and he nods towards a, a CEO of one of the big e-commerce companies. If you can make sure he doesn't get any any time with a with a family, huh? I'll, I'll make sure you get a proper internship at whatever company you, you want next. Assistant to the CEO, whatever you want. You'll be in the C-suite before you turn twenty-five. My word. Do I know who this guy is? Is he the real yeah. deal? Yeah, yeah, he's the real deal. He's he's one of the biggest ones. He's, he he is rich like crazy. He is a billionaire already. I'll see what I can do. Uh, so this, so he wanted me to see to it that this other person didn't speak to to Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. To basically turn him away and to uh, sort of say that yeah, you will have your chance later. You know that kind of uh, that kind of message. Do you do it? Yeah, I, I take I, I present myself also for the uh, for the person I was talking to, and I say um, um, I see what I can do. But I, I say it in a way that really implies that I'm gonna do it. He smiles and he he, uh, he nods to you and he moves up to to his meeting with uh, with Donald Trump and and now this man comes up again having been let through by Daniel and Gavin I mean they don't seem to stop anybody and uh, he's coming up to you what are you gonna do um I walk up to him and I say uh, do I know who he is you know who he is yes imagine um, the CEO of uh, yeah one of the the big online uh, sellers, one of the big like online retail companies. He's he's making a lot of money as well. Not quite as much as the previous guy. What's his name? It's Peter Johnson. Johnson. I I, I go up to him, and say, um, uh, Mr. Johnson, 
uh, Ian, Ian Alexander. There is a um, there's a telephone call for you uh, outside. All right, let's see if you can convince him here um, that this is the case. Why are they not calling on his uh, normal phone? But then again, you do look important. So can we then say that you roll to influence other, which mm, is a charisma roll? Is Ian charismatic? You would say? Uh, I think he's quite charismatic. I think he's uh, especially now when he's got this whole self confidence boost going with uh, his social media accounts exploding. I think he's he's on a roll. Indeed. Well, then roll uh, plus uh, two. So you roll uh, uh, your charisma modifier, which is plus two, and uh, two d tens. Uh, so I uh, I roll a five and a three. Uh, eight plus uh, two is ten. You are able to to get him to believe this story. He tries to sort of move past you first, and it's like, ah, oh, all right, you sure? Okay, but you, uh, you you better let me back into the the line here. Uh, right right as soon as I come back. All right. Absolutely. Um, just follow me. I, I'll show you to the phone. It's it's a it's a secure line. Ah, uh, and he, he seems to get that. It's like, oh, okay, must be really important then. And and but but you have to really kind of focus in on him to get him to do this. And as you do that, you notice that sh- shit. My shirt is wet. Someone spilled wine on me. Um, is it? Can I can I can I look down at my shirt? Yeah, uh, it's kind of all red and wine, and you. You see Gavin moving away from you, um, and you see Kellyanne looking towards you, and she's like, like, motioning with her arms, like, what? I, I try to, f- like, th- I guess I'm just kind of fumbling, thinking of why I have wine over my shirt, right? Yeah, you're not sure, but damn, Gavin? He's won't, um, there's nothing too low for him to stoop to when it comes to, uh, to making making others look bad, he even seems to be able to outshine you at times. Does uh, does the uh, this uh, CEO guy that I'm talking to does he uh, does um, uh, Mr. Johnson does he uh, does he notice the wine? No, he you you started looking at the wine. He disappeared off to where he thinks this phone is, so he's gone, and and you just sort of left there standing there, um, sort of Kellyanne looking at you. Uh, questioning me from uh, far away and uh, you have wine on your shirt and you have a job to do what are you gonna do uh, i think i need to change the shirt but i i i also because of the previous events with the uh, the skin crackling and the uh, the weird elevator experience i also kind of try to assume or see if it's just my imagination you, you look again now damn this this is really wine oh crap but you 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 know where you can get another shirt though. Yeah, so I run back to where I have another shirt. I guess that's probably where I in, in, close to where I have the sofa. Yes, and and you make it back and and you you're back in the room within no time. I mean, you're really focused on on uh, doing this. And and as you come back in, another uh, man approaches you, and uh, he's sort of coming from behind as you're sort of rushing in. You're the man to speak to, yes. Um, that depends on what. Uh, what you're what you're looking for hey, look how about this 20 grand you, you'll have 20 grand in your hand at the end of the night all I need you to do is to deliver this message to Mr. Trump and he holds up an, an envelope the The man who's now looking at you he's, uh, who has approached you is in his 60s bald and is wearing a tux yeah sure just uh, give it to me and I'll, I'll hand it on you can say that it's from uh, Mikhailov I represent some Businessmen that I think the future president of the United States would be interested in speaking more to. Hmm. Are you Russian? Ah, yeah. yes, I uh, be very perceptive of you. Uh, I think you guys are doing some good stuff. He smiles and, and nods too. This will be the easiest money you've ever made. Trust me. Cheers, man. Thank you. Um, I, I take whatever he has. It, I guess it's like an envelope or something. Yes, it's an envelope, and it seems to be uh, containing a note of some kind. Um, he's expecting you to deliver that to uh, uh, to Donald uh, Trump at some point during the night. And you think you will have an opportunity to to do that. I put it in my jacket, but I I, I think I want to see it before I deliver it. Like I don't want to. I, I I still want to know what's going on in the uh, corridors of power. So I still I would still kind of check it out. So if I would walk away. To mm-hmm. where I'm, I'm by myself. Maybe back to the uh, the office that we have, or somewhere mm-hmm. where I can look at it in private. You uh, you are able to open it up discreetly, and you see that the note is written in Cyrillic letters, so it's written in Russian. And so I, I don't understand it, do I? 
No, you do not speak uh, Russian or read Russian, unfortunately. But it looks important. Can I use an app that will translate it with the camera? Yeah, you have one of those. You're a social media expert, after all. Yeah, so I, I, I translate the, the note with the app. It seems, you're not really sure, the, the apps are never perfect when it comes to translations, but it seems to be referring to, to some kind of, well, the word that stands out is some kind of evidence of something, mm-hmm. and that uh, things had better be done in a certain way, something like that. Okay. It's not perfect, but that seems to be the general gist of the letter. I think I, I, I look up uh, Kellyanne, mm-hmm. and I present the letter to her, and I say, um, I, I received this from a, a, a person, uh, and uh, they wanted me to give it to, to Donald. Should I... Mr. Trump, of course. Uh, should, I, should I do that? or what? I think it's better that you take it. Oh, yes, yes, let me take it, and she takes it from you. And she uh, puts it in her pocket. Uh, is it too late to have f- to have photographed it? Uh, no, you probably had a had a photo of it as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's I'm I'm uh, I'm trying to uh, work on a, uh, a bank of evidence. I want I want dirt on everyone. That's my goal. And you're able to get that, and and um, you uh, you do as the uh, the venture capitalist uh, asked you to do. Uh, you wonder what Kellyanne is going to do with that letter. And by the end of the night, you don't actually end up getting any money. Oh. The election results now have started to come in, and Kellyanne uh, calls all over you, uh, all of you over to her. Look, uh, things are, are looking pretty good, actually. And June and Rowena, you have come back as well from the, from the Democratic uh, headquarters. Things are better than I could have e- ever dreamed of. We might really win. She looks genuinely surprised and a bit concerned, sort of like a oh my god, what have I done kind of look on her face. Um, There's going to be a tremendous amount of media storming this place once the results are clear. And we need this presidency to start off on the right tone. Uh, You've seen the protesters outside, right? Yes, it's hard to miss them, sadly. We need the police to disperse them. But unfortunately, they're being peaceful. And, uh, well, the candidate is not happy. You have served the campaign exemplary. You you are my best people. I need you to get out there and get rid of them. Is that something I can count on you to do? I blink a little and say nothing. I feel extremely... And she, she notices your, your hesitation and, and, and immediately says, if you succeed, I can get you face-to-face time with Mr. Trump and tell him just how much you did for us. I can promise you that he will be grateful. And he will have a face to connect to that gratitude. Your faces. Uh, of course we'll do do anything to help. Uh, we believe in Mr. Trump and, and it will be an honor. As I say these words, I kind of feel it's got a hollow ring to it. But I kind of shake that off and, and I start towards the elevator. I, I follow along. I, I kind of, in my mind, I'm already picturing myself being the vice president. I just sort of frown and nod. Of course, and I will make to follow the others, but to be honest, I'm thinking, no. I think I'm just going to let the others do what they want. I'm not going to be involved. No. As soon as I get into the elevator with June, I I start presenting it as her project. Like, I start going, okay, so, um, so what's the plan? We can't really do that, can we? I mean, it's it's wrong. Well, wait. I look at Ian. Have you not got any bright ideas? How about you do some social media something that makes them think something's happening somewhere and they should be there now? There you go. And then they'll go away and then the area will be clear, at least enough for it to be more presentable. There, there we go. Can't you do something clever like that? That is a splendid idea. You're the one that's master of... of agitating the masses mm, um, okay so let's just start with this uh, social media is directed to the people that follow you so that means that I speak to the people that follow uh, me and Mr. Trump which means that I can't really communicate with the uh, with the protesters because as you know they are against Donald Trump that is the whole reason why they are protesting 
that's kind of the reason why people protest. You very rarely protest against something that you agree on. Do you, is is this is this maybe maybe this is a kind of a British uh, kind of way of seeing things that you go out and you protest something that you enjoy. But here in America, we 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 protest things that we don't like. Okay. Don't be smug, Ian. Ian, I'm aware of what a protest is. You are supposed to be smart. Obviously, you don't tweet something positive. You, Why don't you react to your own tweet on something or make up a silly account and you tweet back at it and then it gets the protest or something like, oh, look, another brave person thinks going to this street is going to solve anything. I bet everyone who goes there is stupid or something i don't know and then that gets to them because then they want to piss you off yeah well why don't you just kind of walk out and just speak with your silly accent and maybe that will get them going because that kind of pisses me off ian that's really low what's your problem i take out my phone and i i just go here why don't you you you're the experts so you just take the phones and you just work your magic go ahead go ahead i mean i i clearly don't know what i'm doing so so you guys do uh, your magic. Come on. Yeah, just just get us some followers. Can you do that? Can you do that? I just sort of shake my head a little and I go, if you get your head out of your ass for five seconds, Ian, we were asking your opinion. And you have uh, come down now to the uh, to the bottom floor and you you see what's going on outside of uh, of Trump Tower. You're in the lobby still, so you're safe. It's about 500 people out there, all kinds Mostly young people, white, black, Hispanic, men, women. People like you, really. Way more like you than those inside of Trump Tower. It could possibly be them. You see signs saying, Trump equals hate, anti-fascist, anti-Trump. They're chanting, but they're staying outside the police cordon and are acting peacefully. So, what do you do? I, I mean, I, I still kind of agree with Rowena and uh, and June about the whole social media thing, even though I don't admit it openly. I still kind of think that it was kind of a good idea. Um, so what I try to do is um, I actually do exactly what they tell me to do, which was I, I try to open a some kind of account... While he's doing that, I kind of go, you know what, wherever we send people, we need to have something that gives it some legitimacy. I tell you what, why don't I just... We, 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 June, let's just go for a drive. Let's take one of the cars, and, and, and it can seem as if we're off to do something somewhere, and then the protesters can sort of follow the car and be like, ah, oh, look, they're driving somewhere. I bet there's something happening. We could... A distraction, a distraction, and they follow that, and then when they actually get there, it will turn out it wasn't important, but it doesn't matter because the time's been spent anyway. How do we get them to follow? Well, again, that's up to Ian. It's got to publicize it. It's got to be seem as if something... Can't we just speak to them? Can't we just appeal to them? Just tell them to, instead of wasting time here, we live in a democracy and we have... Whatever the people will choose, they will choose. And why don't they go over to to the other candidate and show their support instead of fighting the inevitable? I mean, you can do that if you want. I say, looking very concerned, because that is not... I'm not ready for that. And to be honest, these protesters, I mean... I, I, privately, I think to myself, are they even wrong? And peaceful protest is peaceful protest. That is part of democracy, I think to myself. But I just say none of that. I just go, all right. If you you, you do what if you want to go out there, Jude, you you can. Uh, I have an idea. I, I as I'm uh, pondering the uh, the suggestion that uh, uh, Rowena had before, um, I've made up my mind a new idea, which um, I I start looking through the social media accounts for. Um, groups that support Trump in New York and I I send out an, 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 uh, some, some kind of message to them where I say that uh, the people are being violent in front of the Trump house and that they are um, uh, threatening to, to break in and uh, overthrow Trump or something like that so I start I start spreading um, uh, this rumor online that the Trump protesters outside are out to um, 
to get Trump. And I mainly focus on, for example, uh, groups that are very kind of that support Trump, but they're also very violent and live in the New York area. So, for example, uh, if if I found like a like a motorcycle club or something that supports Trump, um, I'll target them and try to get them to come down. And uh, you know just what to do. This is uh, your field very much. So are, you're, you're just going to go ahead and do that, basically. So do you say anything about that to, to June and Rowena? Or? Uh, no. I, I, I just do this on my own. Mm-hmm. So meanwhile, uh, June and Rowena, what, what are you doing then? Well, my confidence is a bit shaken about what happened the day before. And I kind of doubt my ability to speak to and appeal to a, a crowd at the moment so I'm actually more inclined towards Rowena's idea uh, to take the car and pretend that if we can get an escort as well we could probably make it look like Trump is you know fleeing the field indeed and you can do just that are you agreed on on taking this course of action, Ian? Are you going to be staying behind then with the the social media while they take the, tri- the car out, or are you going to join them in the car? I'm convinced that their idea is doomed to fail, and so I'm going to try to uh, uh, win advantages by going my own way, and and um, uh, that's what I'm hoping for right now. All right, and Juno uh, Ruina, you're uh, you've got the the limousine ready. Kellyanne, make sure you you have all of the. The support that you need from the the security guards here you can make it look just like trump is leaving are you committed to this action yes i am i think to myself this is a at least this option isn't you know something like e would come up with and uh and so yes let's just do this a silly little drive and at the end of the day it's just gonna waste people's time and and she just wants them out of the way so sure fine let's let's get this over with i'm not really liking any of this and um you start to leave uh, Trump Tower, and then there's a there's a small escort coming with you. It's of course not many, though. I mean, it's only the security guards uh, that uh, the Kellyanne is able to uh, to, to scrounge uh, up. Uh, the police are, are busy with the protesters here, um, and uh, you see immediately how the protesters are are starting to see what's. Uh, what uh, what is going on? And, and they start yelling, oh, he's, he's moving away. He's fleeing, coward!" And uh, around this same time. Uh, you see the arrival of uh, the the counter protesters, the Trump supporters, these uh, motorcycle thug looking uh, fellows that start to to arrive, and uh, the car starts moving out, and, and you're almost past the, the the main part of the protesters when uh, when the clash begins. Uh, the the Trump supporters have brought weapons and uh, rocks, and the police get involved as well, and it becomes this. This, this huge altercation uh, outside of, of Trump Tower and the police lose control of the situation completely and protesters make their way to your car and they start to, to, to push the car. You're stuck. The, there's people all around the car. You're in there now. What do you do? Oh my god. Oh my god, Ruina, what's gonna happen? I don't know. I look very us. upset. I'm generally surprised as well. Where the hell did these people come from? I don't know, I don't know. Uh, um, we're just gonna keep trying to drive through them. Like, not properly, just, you know, like... Just keep trying to get them through. And that the wind windshield is smashed. Ah! And you you feel how the, the car is starting to sort of lift up as the as the protesters are, are apparently lifting the limo. Is this even possible? What's happening? Uh, but maybe we should just roll down the window so they can see that it, it's not done of... Trump and, and and they'll let us go? What do you think? Um, lean down. I looked at the security people in the car, like, could you just, yeah, le- lean down a window and just tell them, sorry, we were just delivering something. I don't know. I'm getting quite panicked. Uh, I didn't expect this and I'm just really thinking I don't want anything to do with this anymore. Let's just get out of here, please. All right. Now I'm going to want you then to uh, avoid harm here. Um, as you try to get out of this situation, which means you will roll uh, your reflexes. The, 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 what happens is that the, the security guard opens the window, tries to get the protesters to, to listen, that it's not Trump, but they immediately just pull him out. 
now you can try to squiggle your way out somehow uh, as they're focused on the guard. And, and simultaneously, the, the counter-protesters have arrived over here as well, trying to, trying to save their hero from, from, from being attacked by, by, by this mob. So, you have a chance to escape, but um, it can go really, really badly. I kind of really want to get out of this situation, so I look to June and I take her hand and I'm going to try and just get us out of this car. I mean, the second we're out, they'll see we're just no, not him and they were peaceful protesters. What is going on? I squeeze uh, Rowena's hand as we kind of brace ourselves to get out of All the right. car. Alright, roll plus reflexes. You start, Rowena. I roll 11. And I roll uh, ten. Ten. All right. Then you are able to get past the worst of it. They, they most of the protesters are, are 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 focused on on this this guard who seems to be more of a threat than uh, than the two of you. Uh, but uh, but some are identifying. He's oh, th- th- those are with those are with Trump. Get him. And um, you have to here roll to endure injury as you are moving past this this mob if you can just get past this you, you think you can get to safety but they're they're like kicking after you and and uh, trying to hit you as you, as you move past them uh, eight 14 14 all right so, uh, with eight, June, you get to choose. Uh, you get uh, the injury is overwhelming, so you choose if you are knocked out. You receive a critical wound, and you can also choose to die at this point. No, I'm, I'm pretty much sure that I, I think I got like a bottle thrown at me or something like that, and and it caught me really badly over the the temple. So I, I kind of. I pass out. I get knocked out. All right. I'm going to say that um, you get a, a serious wound here rather than being knocked out. Um, I'm going to say that you, you get a, a bad cut in the, in the face from this, this bottle and, and you're bleeding uh, from, uh, from, your, uh, from your forehead and, and your hair is, is, is all bloody. Rowena, you are about to get out of this uh, without harm, it seems, but uh, your friend is in trouble. What do you do? I can't just leave her. I need to... Go get her. I, I I kind of run to try and grab her, and as I do, I just try and shout, pointing at the other protesters, and I just sort of say, "Look, they're coming for you. You guys need to do something about it." Would you like to roll them for influencing other here to get support? Yes. Eighteen. Then they do just as as you you ask and. You and uh, June, you are able to make it past this this war, this battle that has begun in front of, of Trump Tower. The, the police quickly get control of the situation, and more units arrive, and and they start to um, they start to to, uh, to push the demonstrators back. But uh, but you still don't seem to be able to get in through the front door here. Uh, you need to get back. Um, and there's supposed to be a, a way around? A, a back entrance, you think? Yes, well, I'll try and make my way there. I'm thankful that I was able to make them see reason. After all, I was being 100% earnest. I generally don't want anyone fighting anyone. I don't understand how this has even happened. I feel a bit annoyed that we didn't even need to do any of this because I guess these people were going to come and cause violence anyway. Which maybe they was... Maybe they should? I, I don't know. Let's just get... June somewhere safe and yeah I'll try and find a way around the back just sort of doing my best to take her with me is she completely out of it as she come round I'm trying to get to wake up she's just bleeding uh, but she's other, th- other than that she's fine good it's like this way June come on let's just get back inside there we go we didn't need to do anything let's just get back where it's safe I, I think I might have a concussion or something I, I really want I, just let me sit down for a, a and moment. you do that and uh, we move back to Ian um, you are uh, looking at the election results come in together with the the other uh, campaign staffers, and you are met by a person that uh, that you know very well. Of course, it's Mike Pence, and he's coming for you, Ian. Uh, I stand up and uh, put away the coffee cup. 
fantastic job. Uh, Kellyanne has told me all about what happened. Really, really proud of you. You are, um, as I said uh, a, a few days ago, you're really the ones who are making this campaign great. I want to, I want you to come and meet uh, Mr. Trump. I think you've earned it. You want to come? That would be a dream come true, I say. And uh, I also say that uh, I just want to send a, 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 a hello from my mother Mary and my father Louis, who, who really admire you and all the work you've been doing, especially for, uh, for, the, for the Christian cause. And he nods and he... God bless them, God bless them. God, God bless us all, he says. And uh, we move back to uh, Rowena and, uh, and June as Ian is making his way up to Donald Trump's office. Uh, you've sat down for a while and, and look, it says employees only. This must, be the, this must be a back way of some kind. It's sort of hidden in a, um, in a, in a service, um, sort of alcove of some kind uh, in the building here. Right, wonderful. Let's go in through here. This will be fine, I say. Can't believe this is even happening. Like, how did it get so out of control so quickly? Yeah, you can scarcely believe it. It it shouldn't have been possible, but something very, very strange is, is going on here. You know that much. And, and everyone is... There's so much emotion here. Much, much more than there should be. But, well, it is what it is. And you are at this door that says employees only and you, you see that yes it is it is unlocked it's quite heavy though but you seem to be able to swing it open good I'll push it open and look to June and say come on June let's get in here get, get back inside and just wait this out this is awful thank you Rowena you're you're always so patient and, and kind well I'm, I'm gonna miss you uh because you're going home right when this is over. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And, you know, I I'll miss you too, June. Like, you know, you you're a good person too. And you deserve a bit of help. It's fine. It's just, I'm missing everything now. Let's get up there. Let's just, you know, at least we'll get to see the best part, right? Hmm. I kind of shrug a little at that and try and get inside. And you're able to get uh, cleaned up. You you had some, um, some some tissue paper or some um, like a handkerchief that you're able to sort of dry away uh, most of the blood with. It still doesn't look good, but you will have a story to tell as you you come in. It swings uh, open silently this this door into a poorly lit stairwell. It's dead silent in here, and you are moving up the stairs, and it becomes more quiet as you as you move up. No sounds of heating ducts or the the building creaking. Rowena, it again gets so quiet that you can almost hear the the muscles twitch in your eyelids. Speech seems somehow muted in here. I feel unwell again and a little concerned. But I say to June, All right, June, let's just get up these stairs and we'll be back in the building. I, I hope we don't have to walk all the way up. This must be some service entrance, yes? Yes, I think so. And uh, you walk up, and it's not that far. You cannot be that far up in the building, you think. The door at the top of the stairwell opens up, and you are met with the inside of Donald Trump's penthouse. The opulence, the in-your-face luxury is the same as before. As you open it up, you see Mike Pence standing by the door, smiling at you, and, and Ian is already in here. It's the same as before, but the room has, has changed. The, the office, it's been set up as a copy of the Oval Office, a, a mockery. An oversized mahogany desk with ostentatious gold inlay is framed by a massive floor-to-ceiling window overlooking southern Manhattan. And behind this desk sits Donald Trump. And One World Trade Center is visible in the distance, directly behind Trump's chair. Somehow closer now. In the room are also Trump, Pence, Melania, and Ivanka. On a TV in the background, Fox News. They're gonna call the election soon. What do you do? I... wait a minute. I feel very confused, because how could we have got all the way from the stairs to here? Ian, what do you do as you see your, uh, your, uh, friends, your, your colleagues, shall we say? come in here. Oh, it's about time. 
and I look at Mike to kind of get his, uh, uh, you know, his uh, attention or his uh, uh, his liking. And he looks at you and he smiles uh, likingly at that. And uh, you you see now all of you. There's something there's something different though about everyone here. Trump, he seems more puffy than usual, and Ivanka is paler, almost drowned looking. Pence seems to be straining at the seams of his immaculate suit, all angles and corners. Melania is the only one who seems remotely close to normal. Trump stares at all of you with a leer. All the the friendliness and professionalism from before is gone. And he speaks. Look, you're smart kids. It's true. You did well. You obviously got good genes. Very good. Very smart. That's why I think you'll make a good, solid, A-plus business decision now. I just sit in a chair, again, being really confused as to what's even going on. But maybe I... Yes, I just sit in a chair. I, I try to, you know, almost shake my head a little, just to see if my eyesight might be a bit jumbled after the the blow I took to the head. And I, I try to get my... my Eyes to focus properly. So, um, we need your blood for a blood sacrifice. It just leaves it at that. Mm hmm. Uh, what? Uh, what does that mean? Pence steps in calmly, still straining in his suit as if it's keeping in something that shouldn't fit. Y- you see, we need to seal a pact between. Eon's old god beings in order to bring a new age to the US and make it great again. Don't worry, though. We only need one of you to to sacrifice your life for your country in a quick and painless ceremony. Could you pick one of yourselves so that we can get this over with? Um, Can I uh, attempt to, like, in my pocket, start to record this uh, whole situation? You can act under pressure, yes. Uh, roll to act under pressure, which we said you were uh, not so good at, so you, you have roll with a minus two. Yeah, and I, I just scored a one and a four. Pence, who has been pretty close to you, he, he um, takes the phone out of your, your pocket immediately and throws it away. Ah. I don't think you want to try anything stupid here. You, you really have no concept of the bodily harm we could inflict upon you. We we could do this violently if, if you want, you see, but this is a beautiful ceremony. Things are finally as they should be. America will be great again. We should not taint this ceremony with violence. But we will if we have to, of course. I, I understand completely. Um, take June. Is... no, no. Is, is this some kind of sick joke? The, sacrifice? What do you mean? I... Haven't I sacrificed enough for you? And um, you you begin saying this, and, uh, and as the conversation continues, the the background outside of the the window begins to change. The the buildings of Southern Manhattan begin to melt away in a shower of fireworks. They start blue, but as the scene goes on, they turn blood red. The votes are in, and the the Republicans are winning. One World Trade Center, the only skyscraper that's still standing, begins to glow with a bright, poisonous green light and swell in, in size. And you you are saying, haven't you sacrificed enough? And, and, and Penn speaks to you. June, we know why you weren't at your post during the second debate. You'd fallen asleep in the bathroom. We can tell everyone how unreliable you are, away at the crucial moment, unable to support us in the greatest time of of weakness, because of stupidity and lack of character. I kind of, at this point, have started trying to go to the door and just see if I can open the door. You start to move towards the door, which is is, uh, locked, and uh, Pence just smiles uh, at you. No, 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 this isn't right. No, this is not what you're all about you're about making everything great again and and about the little people and you're supposed to be on our side this isn't right i'm not doing this no you pushing everyone too far and and this is too far way too far you 
you realize standing there by the door now that the only one he hasn't heard from is, is you. Ian has already um, said what he thinks, and June is uh, refusing to make a choice. What do you do? I don't understand what's happening. This can't be happening. It's not. I kind of... But it is. Yes, I know, but it isn't. I kind of laugh a little nervously, and I just close my eyes and say, well, this is an awful dream, but, I mean, if anything, shouldn't Ian be the one? He wants it, after all. Why shouldn't he reap the rewards? But, again, this isn't even happening, June. It's all right. We're not having a good day. I, I, this door won't open. I'd really like to get a glass of water, please, if that's mm. fine. So you have pointed out Ian, then. Um, well, he, he does seem... Um well, enthusiastic uh, for the cause. Um, I, we are a democracy after all here. June, uh, you uh, you stand by your refusal to make a decision. What kind of sick and twisted test is this? I'm not going to choose one of my friends to be sacrificed in a blood ritual? Well, this is... doesn't, that settles it, right? <laughs> That's what I say. Uh, I believe it does, uh, Ian. Uh, Well spoken there, indeed. Yes, I think we have uh, found just uh, the one. Uh, uh, The the choice is is clear here. It uh, it shall be you, June. We we shall sacrifice you. You will uh, usher in the the new golden era. And uh, Pence begins moving towards you. And Ian, do you uh, are you going to help out? Well, let me ask you this: Uh, Do you need another a new press secretary? <laughs> of course. Well, then it looks like I'm helping. You begin moving towards June as well. Now, Rowena um, and, and June, what do you do here? You see also Melania and Ivanka standing around. They're not doing anything, not saying anything. Uh, Trump is just sitting there leering at what's going on. I start trying to bang down that door. I can't be in here anymore. I don't understand what's happening. This, I must be having a nightmare. I just need to get out of it. I, I, my eye hurts a lot, and I need to get out of here. And I'm just like saying, just let us go. D- D- June doesn't deserve this. What are you doing? This isn't real. Help! Someone help! Um, you just yell out for uh, for help then. Yes, trying to barge down the door quite forcefully now. All oh, right. Um, I'll do my best to help her. Uh, this is. I need to get out of here as well. This is just fucked up. Right. So you're both uh, just trying to bang down the door, but you're not going to be able to open the door by with just the, the two of you. And uh, you have one chance to try to get out of this, uh, and then I will give you one more uh, action in, in that case. But you need to now avoid... Uh, you need to act under pressure, uh, act under pressure here to, uh, to get away from them uh, and be able to do one more thing. Yep. Uh, 11. So you're just able to get away from the two of them. What do you do? Is there anything close, like a, a bottle of champagne or like a wine cooler or anything? Yes, there is. Or maybe, no, something heavier, like a chair or something. There's a, definitely a chair to grab. Who are you going to attack with that? I want to try to, to chuck it out the window. <laughs> I'm thinking of actually jumping myself instead. Uh, I don't want to be a part of their blood ritual. Uh, but I don't want to leave Rowena behind, so... Uh. Yeah, so you can you have to decide right now. I'm going to allow you to throw the, the, um, the chair out the window, and if you want to jump, you can do that. I stay. I actually... I, I back towards the door again and stand close to Rowena, just grabbing whatever I can do and punching whatever I can. And you, you, you scream in defiance and you fight, but you are up against something that can change the very reality around you. The things you're seeing are impossible. A, a massive worm-like nightmare with transparent skin and pulsating organs with a long hanging tongue where, where Trump was. Pence an ungodly amalgamation of flesh and razor-sharp metal. And they get you. You, you chose to stay. And you, Rowena, you're pushed away, and uh, June, you're bound hand to foot to the desk by the, by by Ian and and by Pence. And Pence draws you to pieces. He uh, draws and quarters you, uh, ripping you into four pieces. 
And, and as you scream, he's pouring down this cup from the, the Dunkin' Donuts that you saw him holding at the meeting. It's filled with a transparent substance, and he's pull, uh, pouring it over your head and into your mouth. It produces a, a strange smell of roses and, and burning flesh. Uh, and that's the last thing you see as you're screaming, and the, the blood seeps into the carpet as the sky changes from a, a bright poison green to the, to the deep red of the fireworks. Billboards begin to spring into existence, warning viewers of dissent, of difference, of the, of the punishment for non-compliance. And you are done. The illusion falls back into place. And June's um, remains are there and they're quickly cleaned up by Pence and... Rowena, you are uh, you're giving an, un an envelope filled with money and shown towards the door. You've done yours for the campaign. We, we thank you. And Ian, you stay, right? Yeah. So I would now like you to do a quick epilogue of how what is the fate of your, your characters? And uh, June, you can add your, your final thoughts before uh, you were ripped to shreds. Well, while it all happened, I, of course, was just screaming and crying. I don't know how long for, because none of it made any sense. It was almost as if time just was no longer happening. I tried to help, but I couldn't, because I don't even know why it was happening. And then it's happened... And then I find myself outside the building with an envelope. And I just look confused. What's it like outside the building where I am now, just standing there with this envelope? Um, outside the building, the, um, there are still protesters uh, here. They've been backed off further. They're uh, chanting, uh, Donald Trump, go away, racist, fascist, anti-gay. And uh, they're, they're, they're protesting and they're mad as hell about the fact that he has won the election. You see fireworks going off in the, in the sky and yeah, it's cold. It's damn cold. Did this even happen? I don't understand. I, I go up to one of the protesters and I just hand them the envelope. I say, hey, uh, this is for you. You can have it. Do what you want. Uh, th th thanks. Uh, th thanks, I guess. And, and this, the, the lady that you've given to disappears into, uh, into the, the group of protesters. And I want to go home. I'm going to go home. That's what I'm going to do. I quickly call a cab. I want to wait at the airport. I was going to be going in the morning anyway. Let's go to the airport now and go home. I just want to go home. I don't want to think about any of this. I don't understand. I don't even care if um, I receive anything. I don't care. I, I, I'm just going to go home. So um, we see Rowena um, leaving back for the UK. And does she become well after this? Or is, is there a suicide or a mental institution waiting for her? What do you think? I don't know. I think... No. I, I'm i going to try and do something good. That was the point. I'm going to try and do it. But I don't want to be involved in politics anymore. Not in the same way, I think. No. How could you? And, um... Uh, June, what were your, your final thoughts there? As... As everything was ending... And, and this this thing you had believed in when it it took your life and finally consumed you actually I've probably been consumed long ago under the pressure and all the stress it probably feels like a release like Letting go and find some kind of peace. Even though my last fleeting thought is that I should have voted Hillary instead. 
And Ian, how uh, how do things go from here? Well, it's a press conference room filled with people, journalists. They're eager and anxious, and they're writing frantically on their small, small papers and notes and taking pictures. And um, the press secretary uh, says um, thanks them for the coverage of the election and the success and the new president. And then he says, uh, so I'd like to welcome the president of the United States of America uh, in the 2030-something election, President Ian Alexander. And Ian comes out and he grabs the podium and he starts speaking. And during his speech... He um, he sometimes lets his fingers touch the uh, Dunkin' Donuts cup that he has ready under the the podium. An election comes to an end, but in the sky, the the rocket's red glare still lingers. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played this scenario and the rocket's red glare for Cult Divinity Lost. Cult Divinity Lost is published by Helmgast, and the scenario was written by the talented Jacqueline Brick. Joining us was Isak Jansson, from the Swedish actual play podcast Rollspelsklubben. We were also joined by Jenny Brenberg. The music was made by Atrium Carceri, and was used with permission from their label Cryo Chamber. You can find more delicious dark ambient at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel. If you want to support Red Moon Roleplaying, do check out our Patreon. The show would not be possible without all the generous support we are getting there. You give us so much energy, help us cover our costs, and open up time to record and edit. And remember, death is only the beginning. <laughs>